Yeah. Now, I know you want us to talk about, I think, friendship, maybe? Yeah. Okay, because I know so with sketch and, and everything. So friendship and friendship dynamics. Okay, good. Tell me this about is, it. This is something I've struggled with. And I've watched a couple of your videos on it. And I was like, okay, this is like, this is semi relating to what I think. So you've talked about like anime style friendships. Mm -hmm. For me growing up, it was very much sitcom style friendships. So it was like, for me, it was like boy meets world. Yeah. The one classic. friend that you have every day that can just walk into your house, that sneaks into your house and it doesn't matter. It's just expected. This is what I grew up almost, um, well, I mean, no, I grew up thinking that this is the normal, this is, this is the norm. You get mm -hmm. one person they're your best friend and then you just go through like life together and you have the one person that has your back but growing up i didn't necessarily have that i had my cousin who was yeah. older than me but he had his own friends and then because i was a little bit weird growing up different i never had a personal best friend which always made me feel like uh like i was missing something mm -hmm. and then which in my adult years became when i had my group of friends um it became more like i wanted a friend's style like French where yeah. like everyone's hanging out every single day after work you just go grab a beer and you're, you're hanging out and you're talking about life and the couples are together and and then because life doesn't work out like that because people go through different things in school because people have different jobs kids relationships whatever it may be they move mm -hmm. I then started realizing I'm like oh shit I feel like lonely but I have friends mm. but the only reason I feel lonely is because they're not giving me this attention that I'm like I thought I was supposed to have. And if real friends loved each other or cared about each other, they'd be doing this sitcom thing. So then it get me, like, it, it, I, I mean, I got depressed for a while because I was like, oh my God, do I not have friends? Do people not like me? Do I not like that? What's going on? Yeah. Have I not found my people? Instead of just realizing like, oh, life is, uh, life is life. Mm. And so then when I, wa when I watched your, um, <clears throat> your breakdown with uh, Sketch and Sneeko, I was like, that made a lot of fucking sense. Sneeko does feel, you know, lonely, probably yeah. alienated because the friends that he does have, I think guys do this thing where like, I think being cool is very important to guys and they don't realize it and they won't admit it, but being cool is very important. And so he's selecting the cool friends that leaves him feel alienated versus having actual friends yeah. that you would realize. So I just yeah, want to kind of have a discussion about that. Yeah, I think that's so, I'm fascinated with friendship dynamics and I'm really lucky, like, I've had, like, I just caught up with my bestie today, and I've known her since we were both, like, nine years old. We're in our mid-30s. Like, we're, we've known each other our whole lives, you know? Um, I call her my sister. I'm the person who walks into her parents' house unannounced all the time, and they go, oh, our yeah. second daughter's here. And, like, that's the feeling I always had my whole life. And so we feel, and we grew up with all the sitcoms as well. So, like, we also did sort of assume our life would look like that. And then, of course, both of us are very career-driven, and we live in completely different places. We don't get to see each other all the time. Like it's a, it would be a privilege for both of us to live in the same state, you know, as adults, we just completely went our own way in terms of location, but never in terms of what I would count as like intimacy and the friendship. Like we constantly message each other. We're trying to stay in mm -hmm. touch, but it is difficult. But I also know that if we don't talk to each other for a little while, I know we're good. It's kind of like with yeah. anybody in your life, you know, once you have the security, you feel a little bit better. But I also, you know, as I've aged, I've personally come to realizations like, I, I don't know if this happened for you. I don't, for, how old are you again? I forget. I'm 32. Okay, perfect. So when I got yeah. into my 30s, there came a point in friendships where I went from telling my friends everything to telling my friends what, what I thought was appropriate. Yeah. And I didn't think that would happen. And, you know, some friends took it pretty well. Maybe a couple people didn't understand it because they were like, I, we tell each other everything. I was like, yeah, but like we're adults now. There's yeah. some things that have to be private. I have a husband now. I have a partner and I have information that's not mine to share or, you know, you don't need to know what I ate today. It's not very important. But in our 20s, we would be like, bro, awesome sandwich today, bro. Killed it with the sandwich, you know, and like that's so important when you're in your 20s. Totally. You, it's super important because like for even relationship dynamics, it was uh, watching. Uh, I don't know if you watch High I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Oh, classic. But, yeah. But Marshall and Lily, like, what did you have for lunch today? Yes. Well, they're just do they're doing this every single day. You're building this idea in your head, like, if you don't do these things, you don't love each other. Mm -hmm. So, like, but eventually I think you do get older and you realize, like, well, you're busy. Yeah. And then they're busy. And then I think, uh, I think that comes with, like, maybe the guilt of the first time turning down plans. Totally. Right? When you're like, when you're like, hey, I, I can't go tonight. So now you have FOMO. Yeah. Like, you have this guilt that you want to go and you feel bad because you let the other person down. Mm -hmm. But I think you realize then it's like, oh, shit, I have other 
have other, I haven't I have a whole, I have other things in my life. Yeah. And then they must have uh, hopefully you realize they must have other things in their life. Yeah. Yeah, well actually I think um during COVID I learned a really hard lesson about friendship because like during COVID I had I was one very lax about my career. And two, mm -hmm. I had so much time on my hands. And so I would just spend it for hours on day talking to friends all day, like not even thinking about it. Then when I buckled down and I told everybody I'm going into like my work era, like my hustle era, I think some people didn't realize that meant they would also have less time with me. And that it became like a, almost like a form of abandonment or an entitlement, which I think is just like, obviously I'm always like, it's trauma. Cause like we're grownups. We have to understand there are times in our careers in which we have to separate. I saw this TikTok that said, um, you know, white kids are so funny. They'll abandon their family for a career, but that's why they're successful and brown people aren't. And I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. But also, wait. And I was thinking about it. I was like, that that seems to be partially true in my own life where I've had to feel like I'm abandoning my family to be able to work. And it sounds weird, mm -hmm. but then thank God my dad's an entrepreneur because he's like, go, go, go work, you know? But it is like, you have to say no to get togethers. You have to say no to hanging out and you have to say, and it feels so weird. It feels weird. It feels it, weird. It, feel, it feels like you're rejecting your family. Yeah. See, I don't know if, so I grew up, I grow up in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. So I'm. Shout this out. Is, My family's and, there. This is a, yeah. This is an Arab community. Yes. Um, so like the whole leaving has always been actually weird in my family. When I moved out to college, my parents had divorced. Mm -hmm. And so it was a whole like, look, you're, you're, look what you're doing to the family. You're just separating. You're just trying to be separate. Uh, you're just trying to be away from us. This isn't beneficial. You were supposed to be together. So actually, like, I completely understand the whole like, they don't want you to leave and they like staying at home. What could like hinder? But I, but then again, it's like it's a lot of doctors, engineers, and business owners here too. So it's just like it's it's that was a confusing thing. I was like, huh, I I do see it, mm -hmm. I do see it. But the thing is, like, I I battle with this issue because you said it's entitled, right? You feel like mm -hmm. entitled to like this this people's trying to. I feel that way a lot of the time, and I'm still working on getting over feeling like I these people I deserve these people's time at the like when I want it. For sure. Because sometimes I do have free time. I'm like, well, I should be spending it with my friends and family and they should want to spend it with me. Mm. So I like sometimes I struggle with the importance of friends and the people that are around me specifically. I do. I do sometimes struggle with that. And I'm working on dealing with that. Now, I've gotten a lot better. I now understand people have time. People have families. People have whatever it is. But then I'm left feeling lonely which is so now i've turned to the internet mm. right i'm like well i want to jump on streaming and fill my time with other people different connections see what else i can do build different types of friendships learn different types of friends because for a while i was very no new friends oh interesting. i had my i, I had my click mm -hmm. um and also growing up i've never been a like a guy's guy oh okay. i was like friends with my cousin so i was friends with his crew but me and guys have never gotten along What's up with that? What category of guy are you? Like, are you? Um. Like, who do you get along with? Well, I get along with women. Do what get along kind with of women? women? But then, um, I, it really doesn't matter. I kind of okay. just get along. You know, we just we just hang out. But then also, I I have more more progressive guys. Oh. I'm definitely more friends with progressive guys, even though I'm a little bit more traditional in my personality. Hmm. It's it's I, I I call myself a walking contradiction <laughs> sure. because I, it's it's like I never got along with like the sports guys. I never got along mm. even like in my neighborhood. I was always the white boy growing up oh, versus funny. everyone was like, you know, do you speak Arabic? This, I do speak Arabic, fluent Arabic. Lucky and I've been bitch. to Lebanon more than any of these people. How do you call me white? Well, the reason they're calling me white is because I wasn't acting black, which yeah, was like yeah, yeah. a big thing, rap culture and so on That's and so, so forth. Everyone was like mimicking. So I always felt like weird. I always felt like I got along with girls because it was like, it was easy. It was nice. It was fun. We got to just talk about things. Like I enjoy things like fashion and like makeup and stuff like that. Like I like that stuff mm -hmm. while being a straight guy. But then with like when growing up, if I would go hang out with a girl, all the guys that I had like been friends with at the time, like, oh, you're going to go sleep with her? You're going to go fuck her, bro? And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, dude, we're just going to go like hang out. And like, what are you gay? I'm like, I don't know if that's gay. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a whole thing of like, uh, for the longest time, everyone called me gay. Mm. So then I had, I built like this whole allyship to like the LGBT community. I'm like, yo, if I get called gay all the time, 
and I'm not gay, and I'm like, all right, cool, this is still kind of annoying. Imagine actually being gay and then yeah. actually being judged, yeah. which gave me this whole, like, empathy towards, like, the LGBT com uh, community. And I'm like, okay, so I'm ally there, which pushed me further from, like, the boy bubble. That's funny. Right? Because if you're in, if you're, if you're ally, it's kind of, like, hard. People are, you know, a lot of homophobia, so on and so forth. So it's like, it was just weird. So then when I did find my friends, my group, I felt very attached. What and kind of still people are they? I feel very attached. What kind of bubble is it? Um, I mean... It's it's honestly a pretty diverse bubble. Everyone's relatively progressive. It's it is all like a bunch of Arabs because that's what I grew up with. Great. Um, but like, I hang out with their wives. I hang out with their kids. We are just like we we don't talk. It's it's not sports. It's, we're always talking about like plans that we want to do in the future. Like how ever like th things in order to improve. Like we will talk about like you know like how, struggles that we're going through. Or sure. like my friend has kids. Hey, like. Do you feel like you're messing up in doing this with your kid? Are you trying to be like a like religious family? Are you trying to be like what's going on? Yeah. You know, so on and so on. So it's like we it's it's a deep friend group. Yeah. But because they're busy, it's just like I'm like, ooh, the that that loneliness sometimes ensues still. Can you explain loneliness? Because I know everyone has such a different relationship to it. Like I define loneliness as sort of uh I always say, like, I, I haven't experienced loneliness in years, and I think it's because loneliness for me is, like, my relationship with myself when I can't be alone with myself. But that doesn't mean I'm not sometimes like, oh, I need this stimulation. I need this back and forth. I need this, like, social, you know, spoons feel. I need this, like, ex you know what I mean? So what does loneliness mean to you when you say it? Uh, for me, I love shared experience. Mm -hmm. I think experiencing things alone can be, like, fun. But I also love talking about it. I like sharing the experience. I love, I love enjoying something with someone or even like negatively, like ha having something impact as like a group. I like just shared experience. So for me, when I'm like doing things alone, I don't feel like, I feel like bored. Sure. Sure, almost, sure, sure, sure. You know, it's, uh, it's like, um, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's like, eh, like if someone else was here, the food would taste better. The movie ah, would be funnier. You Are know, you, it's, it, it, do you identify as like extroverted? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's funny because mm -hmm. I think a, a conundrum with streamers is like everyone always thinks I'm very extroverted, but I'm like a very internal, like, ex like, in like, I guess like, I'm not, I'm extroverted in personality and introverted mm -hmm. in lifestyle is kind of my thing where like my, my personality is loud and I'm social, but also like I grew up with a huge family with 80 first cousins. Of course we're social. Like, of course, we're, what are you talking about? But at the same time, like, I'm always, I'm better one-on-one. -on -one than like okay. in a group or like even you know how you reference how i met your mother in my 20s my very millennial group we would watch that show we would dress up in suits and go play laser tag like we we're such losers but it was great <laughs> it was like the greatest and the memories we built was great and it was based off yes. of wanting to recreate that energy of those tv shows and then eventually i remember one time i woke up and i was like guys are we done like partying and drinking every weekend like, you guys want to do something else and they're like like what and i was like something else and like we we're all into something politics that's this. how we met we met via politics right but like, mm -hmm. I was like, let's do something else. Let's talk about growing up and doing life. And then we realized like, oh, we're not going to do life together. And that's weird to realize. So then I realized, okay, I have like this inner circle and then like my outer circle, and then people who are just in the world, right? So like my inner circle, still, we're all doing our own thing. But, and even though I'm not doing life with them, I feel like I hope to, obviously my goal is to know them until we die, right? Yeah. These are the people I want to see grow old. I want to see what they do with their lives. But at the same time, how do you like balance that sort of like respecting that people are doing their life differently than you? Like I'm just like so introverted. I don't think about it if I'm going to be honest. Like my friends are doing their own, like they're in their own animes and then I'm in mine and then we have crossover episodes. Oh, okay. That's I how like I feel about it. I feel like everyone's in my anime. Oh, okay. Okay. Now Tell they're all doing it. their own things, but I don't feel like they have their own animes, which oh, is like, shit. Okay. Which, which is annoying. It's so fucked up because they do. Yeah. Obviously. Cause like we have our friends, uh, like I have my, my close circle, which I will want to see for my fear, like foreseeable future. And then like within that group, there's like two or three that I'm like closer with the inner, inner circle. If that, sure. if there is one, you know, um, my, the thing with that is like, so I'm extroverted in the sense that I like being in crowds of people. I'm very mm -hmm. comfortable in crowds of people. I'm comfortable on stage. Ooh. I don't necessarily want to talk to anyone new though. Mm. So my buddy, so my buddy who's definitely more social, more extroverted than me, one of my, like my closer friends will go out and he'll just go buzz around yeah. and just like strike conversations with everyone. And I'm like, no, dude, I'm good being like, get having the energy from people watching. He's like, I love people oh, watching. Same. And then. We'll consult. I'll consult with like with like my counsel, mm -hmm. and then we're, we're we're all right. I don't. I, I feel, I'm. Um, I feel like almost tribal. I feel like I like my crew. I like my group. I don't hate other people. Right. 
Right. But I know that other people are other people. So yeah. th this is mine. I feel comfortable here. I don't want to like, because I have a, I do have like a strong personality. I can be very annoying off the mm. first like few meets. And I'm not trying to go through that with someone like uh, uh, so someone new. Yeah. I like the people that I like. And then over the internet is maybe a lot easier. So like lately yeah. of like building these like types of relationships of like having a different diverse groups of friends. Like, so I've been on like prime panels. I'm like, oh shit. This is so interesting, all these different people like with different opinions and like no one's necessarily getting butt hurt. Now I'm seeing the internet. I've watched uh, a few things. I'm, I know some people can be sensitive, but like, sure. yeah, I mean, I, the, the, those aren't my people, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's been interesting because I have seen you on a couple panels and things. And it, it's always interesting to me because like I, I haven't been a streamer for very long. I've been doing a little over a year now, I think, fully. Like I've always yeah. streamed. Every YouTuber has like a stream they do for their audience. But I was never primarily a streamer until recently. And so I wasn't in the community and I didn't really understand like the different groups of streamer communities. And it's always been a little awkward. Like one of the things I always find so awkward about this space is like friendship. It's just the weirdest thing ever. But then I realized like, like even with you, cause I've been very, I'm being very particular about my collaborations just because I, mm -hmm. they go sometimes, I just don't know how to navigate the space. I we think I'm left. just socially awkward a little bit, but even with you, I was like, oh, well we had a really good time on the panel. It was really good energy. He seems very secure in like his little thing, which means that my thing won't bother his thing and his thing won't bother my mm -hmm. thing and we can just talk. And even now, like you're very like talky, 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 which I like the high energy because I'm like, oh, we have like, he has things to say. And that makes yeah. me excited. And so I wondered how are you integrating into the space in terms of like um, social expectations of friendships or anything like that? Like for even this, like, what is this? What are we doing, right? Are we co-working? Are we co-workers? Are we like working? Because I consider this work. Like I'm at work right now. Are you at work? Yeah, but then there are work friends, right? Yes, there are. That's what I think it is. It's like uh, people, so you, you work how many hours a week, for example, are you like, in your work, are you streaming for like 20 hours a week and then you're editing for 10 and maybe you're consulting for like five. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, that's a lot of time out of your day. And then, I mean, I would consider those relationships still sure. at the end of it, right? I mm -hmm. mean, people get offended when someone doesn't respond to them. Someone, someone says something that they disagree with. Right now we have like, everyone's kind of beefing amongst the whole, like after the assassination sure. type. It's sure. like everyone's arguing and they're like, they're like, I didn't know you thought like that. I didn't know you thought these. So it's like, you, I think like to, I don't, I wouldn't, I couldn't separate mm. like work relationships and friendships from like non-work. Now, obviously we're not going to be hanging out one-on-one, -on -one, but like you're not hanging out with your friends one-on-one -on -one either. Your inner circle, right? They're, they're all doing their own thing and you're getting updates through like texts yeah. or phone calls or like just, you know, online communication. Sure. And like what's, uh, what would be the difference for you other than like the things that you're maybe opening up to people but also you're a pretty open person online. Expectations. I'm actually, like, I am mm. very specifically open. Like, I, I tread my lines of what I'm open. I am a very open person, but mm -hmm. I do have my limitations. But I think it's expectations that bother me. Like, I've noticed, like, um, sometimes I'll have issues. And it happens on occasion. So, you know, where people, like, they emotionally dump on me. And I'm like, hey, we are working. I am not your family oh. member. I am not your, like, your friend. Like, even friends. Like, you can't just emotionally dump on your friends. Like, you have to ask people permission. Like, hey, can you handle this right now? Is this okay? Are you available? I need to talk to somebody. Like, and even asking, like, a person that you've collabed with a couple of times, like, hey, can I talk to you about something? For me, is like, super inappropriate. Like, I'm at work. You do not know me. If you do not know my family, if you do not see me, like, what are we doing here? If we haven't talked enough mm. off stream for me to build a relationship with you, like, we're working. And I've worked already in work. Like, I've worked a normal job. I know what it's like to have coworkers and I feel like I've always been the person people dump to. So I think I'm just being stricter mm -hmm. with my boundaries too, where I'm like, Hey, I know I'm not like, I'm a judgy, non judgy bitch, but like, I can't do this emotional labor for you. But I find the streaming communities are so weird. Like I will have people reach out and they'll be like, Hey, can I talk to you? I need to talk. And I'm like, no, I don't know you. No. And I'm just like, I don't know how to tell them without like hurting their feelings. Like I don't want this because once I open the door for it, it's only worked out in like my negative, like it hasn't worked out in my favor because then it's just weird. So like for me, I have to separate them. So it's interesting that you don't. Well, okay. So this is something I've given a lot because I do, I've done streaming on TikTok, mm. which is very one-on-one. -on -one. You can't like up until recently, you couldn't watch YouTube videos. Like it was just you and your phone and it was a, basically a, and you just have this one-on-one like, -on -one with your community, with your chat. Something I realized is you don't know them. They fucking definitely know you, 
right? All of these people. So like, for example, I know you way more than you know me. I don't stream. I haven't had any videos up. You've seen me maybe seconds to an hour sure. at most. I've seen you for a few hours. So I, I feel personally like I'm like, okay, I at least get the vibe of who Brittany is, mm. right? And then for a lot of people who are maybe, um, for a lot of people who are watching streams, it's not that it's not that they're desperate. It's not that they're lonely. It's that you're you're you are hanging out with this person who is your friend. Like you're their friend. My audience or friend. the streamers. Yeah. I have the audience. What? That's inappropriate. That's very parasocial. It is, but I, I think that's what's happening. I think people are spending like you're it's it's your room. You're like the classroom. You're like the teacher. Okay. Right. And then you have your class of students, and then they're making friends and relationships amongst sure. uh, amongst each other within your class. But then also they get semi communication to you, and then they're spending all this time. So they feel like one. I'm. It's not that I'm watching a streamer. It's that I'm hanging out with this group of people collectively, and then sure, we sure, all sure. get to talk to the streamer. Yeah. And so with with streamer to streamer relationships, I think I, I think they don't realize it, but. Or maybe even like it's it's it, I don't know if it's that weird because I've I've worked at as like a waiter before, right? Waiters very open about everything, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, you walk in, everyone's trauma dumping, everyone's hooking up. There's it's it's yeah, everyone's yeah, complaining yeah. like you, you already have the common enemies. Everything's all like set up for you to be like this like tight knit group of people. I think that's what streaming is too. Like mm. you like as a streamer, you exp like I've experienced like drama i've experienced people talking shit I've people uh, i've experienced people misconstruing what i'm saying Ugh. so if i've built a small connection with you like i've talked to you twice sure i might feel i might be like well who else is going to understand me other than this person who i did click mm. with who me and her do have like this kind of like like you know vibe together like she'll understand where i'm coming from she wouldn't complain and if anything it should be it'd be reasonable for me to like go to this person because we're co-workers sure 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 so I think that's like, that's I can why see I that perspective like... as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will say I will. I see the perspective of like, and I worked at a deli once and it was the same trauma dumping and intimism. It was so everybody was yeah. doing stuff with each other. It was like incredibly mm -hmm. just, and it was honestly toxic. And that's the problem is like, I am trying not to have that relationship here. So like, I've made it a thing mm -hmm. that I will block you. If I've explained to myself twice to you and you still trauma dump on me, I will block you. And yeah. like, that's the thing is like the problem I run into is like, there's also like, because I watch you in the internet, I like, when I watch YouTubers take me out of context, I'm like, are you, am I stupid? Or are you stupid? Who's stupid? Somebody's yeah. gotta be stupid. Cause I'm like, yeah. what is happening? And I get so confusing to me, but then I'm like, okay, is it the bubble language? Is it the misunderstanding here? Like what is happening? And then I sit there and I think like, what could I have done better? And sometimes I feel like there's never enough, even with friendship, but I will say like, even with siblings, like my little siblings, it, there is a relationship there. Like I talked to my brother today for like a couple hours. We are like, just, we haven't caught up in a while. We were just, 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 and it was really nice to hear from him. But what we're really doing in that moment is we're updating each other because look, when I get off stream, my life continues. Yeah. I'm not just the person you see in this, like this one moment, my siblings, I'm the, you know, we mostly meme communicate, right. As you do. And then when we talk on the phone, they're getting the actual update of what's mm -hmm. actually going on in my life. Not just like, cause you know, I didn't know my brother had switched jobs or this was happening or this person was living with this person. I'm like, oh, and now I'm getting the real update. Cause I think people, for me at least, I need to, re I re need to remember like, there's the, there's the faux update and then there's the real update. And that real update is the level of intimacy and closeness we're really have having. You're mm -hmm. not updated cause you heard something on stream, especially on streams where things are so taken out of context or you hear one sentence and you think it's real, but it's a joke or like, that's why when I call my friends, I'm like, Hey, how is life? What's really going on? Yeah. Not just these updates I've been getting on text message. So for me, I have to separate, like, how much do I know you in terms of this? And how much do I know you in terms of like this, this social context? Right. And so that's what it's about. Like, I understand that parasocial relationship between me and the audience exists and it exists between streamers. We've seen it time and time again, and I don't think you can escape it. And I think you can have a healthier relationship with it, but I am kind of curious as this relates to sketch. I do want to hear your opinion if you're willing to give it like, what was it like mm -hmm. for you to see sketches boys defend him so hard? Uh, I was, okay, uh, first of all, shout out Gen Z. They, they killed shout it. out Gen Z. They and killed a, couple, it. a couple of the millennials too. a couple of the millennials too. Um, it was, I was worried when it came out because mm. when 
Cause like I like I, I saw the memes of Sketch. I got to know like the the, the, the whoever Sketch was in the beginning. I was like, this guy's like a, finally a fucking wholesome s like you know kind of guy. Like sure he's still a guy. He's still like you know like hitting on girls and saying, but like he's, he's not he's not doing anything crazy. Then everything comes out about him. I'm like at first I was like you know no nah, I hope this is I hope this isn't him because one that's gonna be a big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. Then it wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. then it wasn't me and i was left confused for a little bit i'm not i was like whoa wait yeah. what's going on this is because the same thing had happened to a person in my city oh, 10 years ago really where he needed money he did gay porn he wasn't gay but then that leaked yeah and every like the, the kid essentially left the city and never like showed his Damn. face he could not walk anywhere without anyone like caught and it's like mm. I watch and I was like, do you guys not understand that, like, the guy, like, his brother was sick, his family was broke. I was like, the guy just did, he did this, like, he, like, this was a last resort. This wasn't, like, a, like, a thing. And no one cared. Like, no, you could do anything for money. I was like, and I don't know if you guys know how much mm-hmm. money, like, you, you want, you want to lump sum. You don't want payments of $20 an hour. Like, this was, this wasn't a, a, like, a personal choice. So watching that was exactly how I felt when, like, Sneeko was going off. I was like, this makes sense. I, I'm completely understanding of like why Sneeko's doing this. And I was just like, I, the quickness of how it died down for Sketch mm-hmm. was amazing. And the I'm not going to lie, top tier, um, I'm not, not going to call it an apology, a, uh, like when he was explaining, yeah, yeah. top tier explanation. explanation. Like the guy yeah, won, yeah. the guy won. And honestly, I was, I was, I was just amazed by it. Yeah, yeah. I was really moved by it. I I watched some of it off stream and I was like getting emotional, mm-hmm. especially like growing mm-hmm. up. Like you said, like I do you know the Keldians in Dearborn? Like okay, so that's yeah. my family, right? Like we're Keldian. Okay. So we're in nice. San Diego and Dearborn. Like those are our two locations. Nice. Yeah. And you know, I was the first kid to come out as like queer in the family, and that was like a pretty big mm-hmm. deal. And, like even family from Iraq was like, What are you doing? I was like, What are you doing? You don't even live here. And like it was a big deal. And then of course, you know. My family, I still would argue, is pretty closeted. Shout out. But I understand. And even my mom. My mom has three gay kids. So it's, like, really funny. Like, I was like, oh, that's what you get, mom. And, like, it's, like, a big joke in the family. It's, like, how did three of her ten kids become gay? It's, like, you know, numbers. It's a numbers game, you know? Statistics, you know? But it is one of those things where I look at Sketch and I remember all the differences of growing up, especially in a political climate. I've been political my whole life. Um, Less so now as a career, but... Where, you know, fighting for gay marriage and things were so important. So to, to see Sketch's boys defend him, whether or not Sketch feels like it's wrong now or whatever his journey is, yeah. it's just the fact that there is a change happening. And the shift is here. And the shift is always going to be like humans are going to human, but they're going to slowly learn. And so for me, I thought it was really nice because I saw Sneeko and it feels like Sneeko is always crying for help. That's how it feels yeah. to me. And I'm like, yeah. why don't any of your friends have your back? And it's because in my mind, like there's a difference. Like, look, I think one of the most important things about the way that I navigate my friendships is that I almost have none of like my friends and I have very. We have general moral overlap, but in general, we have different morals. Of course. And we're friends anyways, because the idea isn't that we have the same morals and that's why we're friends. The idea is that we like the human that we are. And sometimes I wonder if Sneeko has anyone who likes the human that he is. I don't even think he likes himself, if I'm going to be honest. And I think that's the difference maybe between Sketch and Sneeko. But I think that all comes from like how we connect and have relationships. And I think it starts with the relationship you have with yourself. So like, how has the relationship with yourself manifested into the relationship you have with other people? Do you have any idea? Uh, I I was said, what do you mean by that? Like, if I think about my life and I think about my friendships and how I've been a bad or good friend, I think about how I was having a relationship with myself at the time. Like, I'm a worse friend when I'm worse to myself. And I'm a better friend when I'm best to myself. And so kind of playing off that loneliness conversation, like, I think I'm, I've only experienced loneliness at times in my life when I was, like, really having a bad relationship with myself. Um, my relationship with loneliness, not yours. But like, I wondered yeah. if you had any thoughts on that. Like, how has your relationship with yourself m- kind of played a role in your relationship with others? Um, when I'm, I guess when I when I feel like low about myself, I will. T- I tend to recluse. I tend to want to be mm. alone. I don't want to speak to anyone because I don't necessarily like sh- uh, sharing my issues with anybody. Mm-hmm. One because I feel like I think about my stuff so much that. Anything I tell someone, they're going to be, um, I was explaining this to my girlfriend the other day. I feel like I want to 
voice my complaint that I have about myself. And now I, when I do that, I feel like, so let's just say I'm complaining about work, right? And I tell my friend like, oh my God, like I'm just doing so bad at work, rents so I can't afford it, blah, blah, blah. When I'm telling them that, I don't want them to validate what I'm like, mm. what I'm feeling. I don't want them to help. I don't want like, because I understand that they can and I understand what I need to do to do like to it. I just want to complain. And I almost want like a sternness mm. from them. I want to, I want them to be like, well, no, you, you got to fucking buckle down and get a job. Not tell me, oh, I got your back. I'll help you. Yeah. Cause then that makes me feel worse. That one that makes me feel like I went to them and uh, manipulated them into helping me by giving them a sob story. Sure. 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 Right. Mm. And sometimes I feel like that with, um, with, uh, like even in, in like my relationship, like if I'm dating someone, I feel like if I express um, something that bothers me, that I'm causing that person to shift how they treat me, and that feels manipulative. Yeah. But then also on the flip side, keeping things in and then acting out is also, like it's, it may not be manipulative to them, but they're going to feel like uh, left out. They're going to feel like you're not communicating to them. So I guess it's like th that mm. balance is like the one thing that I had, like I struggle with. Yeah. Okay. I have a personal question. So if it's too personal, just don't answer it. Of course. You're good. Um, do you consider your partner a friend? We were friends for three. She, we're long distance. Oh, she okay. lives, she lives in a uh, different state. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we were friends for three years and then like recently decided like, Hey, why aren't we like mm -hmm. trying this? Okay. And then, so yeah, so like she's, she's like one of my best friends. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, cool. Yeah, I do feel very open and like I can tell her anything and we have such amazing talks. Uh, I actually would love for you to meet her because you, really? you talks about bubbles. Well, she was a Jehovah's Witness and left. Oh, interesting. And so I think that'd be a really interesting community, a conversation for like for you to have. Plus, she's doing her own thing, uh, like a Reconstructionist uh, podcast with oh, someone else. Oh, interesting. Talking about like coming up from that. So uh, we have like we have, we have like such amazing talks. I feel, I feel very, very open. But uh, like... The, here's a little little anecdote when we we were going out mm -hmm. she um we we walked by this cafe she's like i want to get a sandwich so she wanted a turkey sandwich from this from this one cafe mm -hmm. now i know there's a better turkey sandwich somewhere else now instead of being direct with her and being like hey there's a better sandwich over here i was like hey maybe we, like, instead of doing that i was like coy I was mm -hmm. like, hey, like the sandwich doesn't look good. Like maybe we should go somewhere else. I know I have a different sandwich shop. And then she got annoyed. She got frustrated. She's like, mm -hmm. hey, if you wanted another sandwich or another place, why weren't you just like direct with me? Right. And I explained, I was like, well, honestly, I felt, I felt like if I feel like if I'm direct, I'm almost like commanding or demanding something. And I don't want to demand something because you saw like something that you wanted but I don't, I didn't know how to like explain to you. Well, I know there's something better without having it be like, I don't want to like be commanding over you. Sure. I don't want to have, I don't want to feel like I'm controlling you. So then we had that conversation. And that's so now I was like, you know, mm -hmm. that's a very, now I'm a lot better at it. Yeah. That's the directed. Okay. So I'm a very direct person, but even mm -hmm. I catch myself and almost like, and my partner has called me out a few times where he's like, Hey, you're doing a thing. And I was like, what am I doing? And he's like, mm -hmm. just be direct. And I was like, Oh yeah. You're right. I picked up a habit. And like, I, it's like you're always fighting what even former relationships taught you. Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of amazing. Um, and this is like, by far, like the hell everyone knows my 20s was a mess. This is my healthy 30s relationship. Okay. And same, same. It's great. It's like, it was so magically mm -hmm. different. I can't even explain like, communications a, oh better my like, god everything, everything is better. Like, and it's so funny, mm -hmm. like, I didn't realize that when we first got together, and like, we would do things like cook in the kitchen together and I would flinch. And he's like, why are you flinching? And I was like, oh my God, I think I still have trauma from my last relationship where like I've had dishes thrown at me and I've had people get really upset. And he's like, I am yeah. never going to do that. And he has You don't want to bug he, the person. Yeah, you don't want to like, don't wanna bug, oh, You don't want to like, get in the to. way. And I'm so obnoxiously, mm -hmm. obno like I am a very loud person, which I'm sure you could relate to, but I'm a very loud mm -hmm. and like you just mm -hmm. know I'm walking through the house because I'm just, you know, and so I'm definitely the loud one in the relationship, but it's one of those things where I also realize like, oh, I have communication habits that I picked up after mm -hmm. a long time and that even breaking those habits is so nice, but you have to do it in a place where you feel safe, whether it's friends yeah. or somebody else. And I think a part of it is like, what is even appropriate in the relationship? Like a lot of people I have, this is my relationship. You don't have to do it. We have like a radical honesty policy 
which is I want you to feel safe enough to tell me and then I'll decide how I feel about it. And as long as I'm allowed to say, like, I think that hurt my feelings and we're very like neurodivergent, we'll be like, I think that hurt my feelings 5%. Like we'll put a number to it. That way we can sort of be honest, but also talk about like, why did that even happen? But we're also very obsessed with like philosophy and introspection. So we're like, why did that hurt my feelings? And then we'll talk about that. I might take that. It's really cool. It's really I might nice. Take that thing. I like that. Actually. It just it's a safe, like it's just like a safe tool to give ourselves yeah. so we don't have to feel defensive because the mm-hmm. natural instinct is just to like defend ourselves. And I'm like, let's not do that. And I yeah. feel like this, you have to have a really safe space, especially growing up in a family that's so argumentative, like mm-hmm. f- which is beautiful. My parents have this weird culture in their home where it's like, say what you want, but someone's gonna say something back. And so it's like you have to pick and choose your battles. And it's nice to like have a safe space to be like, I think that hurt my feelings, but I need that to be okay. And I also need it to be okay that I'm going to work on it. But also, Mm -hmm. can we talk about like why that even happened in the first place? And I think, again, this even goes back to friendship where with some of my – okay, this is a question I want to know. Do you separate – because some people don't – your friendship intimacy from your relationship intimacy? Like the relationship – the intimacy I have with my partner is different than the intimacy I have with my friends. Yeah. Okay. Do you, yeah. like, as an example, I feel like my partner is the only person who fully sees me and I tell him everything versus my friends. I try to bond on the things we see each other in and then I try not to cause fights over things we can't see each other in. But sometimes that hurts their feelings where they're like, I can see you. And I was like, no, you can't because you can't regurgitate my, like, conversation back. Like, you don't, I can tell you don't get what I'm saying. And sometimes people think, like, oh, but, like you should be able to tell because you're friends. Do you think that? Do you think your friend should have to understand you fully? Probably only like inner inner circle, like mm. people that I've known for like 15, 20 years. I would say I don't set necessarily like I feel the same, not intimacy, because obviously I love my girlfriend, like my partner differently mm-hmm. than like I love my like best friends. Uh I see them as more like siblings, oh, like, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. cousin. Like mm-hmm. a cousin almost. Mm-hmm. Versus, like, my girlfriend's, like, my partner, my wife, like, poten- like potential, like, mother, my kids, so on and so forth. This is, like, this is a different relationship, more a little bit maybe more nurturing. Maybe I watch myself a little bit more when I'm around them as to because of their things. Mm-hmm. So, like, but with my, with, with, like, close friends, yeah, I would assume that, like, I feel like they should know you. Even if they disagree, they should know, mm-hmm. like, your thinking, right? But, Ooh, maybe, and, like, just your, like, just, like, your regular friends, like, just mm-hmm. people that you see in the, in the day-to-day, I don't think so, not necessarily. Interesting. I feel like... There are parts of our friends that we see, but sometimes we can't embody their like lived experience. Like, I don't know, but I have also, I think the beauty of my friendships is that I don't require it of them because I don't think Mm -hmm. it's my business. (laughs) Like, I don't think it's my business to have to understand every part of them to accept and love them. But I think that's maybe my, my, like even my siblings, like sometimes I look at them and like, why are you doing this? And the fact that I have to ask why makes me feel like, I don't know why you're doing this, but also like it's your journey, I guess, you know, go for it. And I think that that is like my gift to my friends and family is like, I don't have to understand it to still love you, but I might disagree, you know? Oh, I still love the person, but I want to know. I'm very nosy. I mean, I I want to know too, but sometimes like I can't put the math together where I'm like, that is like, sometimes I feel like I can't see somebody enough Mm -hmm. to really like, I can logic my way to why you went there, but I can't really get that embodied experience you know what i mean like i can't my brother is someone i deal with that because he's seven years younger than me Mm. so he's and he's he's not in the same bubble world that i am in so like for for example like he didn't know who rihanna like what rihanna looked like i was like what do you mean you don't know what what does that mean i love that i don't know i don't know what but we argue so much because i do have a problem of speaking in generals Mm. don't we speak generally sure he is very much like Gen Z. I, I, apparently, they're very much like, no, I don't know about Gen. I'm like, I, I, I'm like well, but statistically at this, and they're like, no, no, no. But like the, the, my, my friends here and these people over there and everything's so nuanced and like personalized for them. And it, it, we definitely there's like big beef because I'm always like, I want to be the older brother. So mm. I feel like, hey, I have this wisdom to, uh, that I want to share. Why aren't you accepting anything I'm fucking saying? <laughs> Which honestly is one of the weirder feelings I've I've had re- recently because of so many dynamic changes for like people for like ages, I feel like I grew up watching very like basic shit. The older brother was just like the one you went to when you had like issues. He knew all this like extra stuff that like he had li- like you know lived experience, shared experience, so on and so forth. And even with like 
it feels weird. It feels like you're not being respected, mm. right? You feel you. Uh, I feel like sometimes I'm like, well, wait, why aren't why aren't you listening to me? Is this do you do you yeah. not think I'm smart? Do you not think I I've went through certain things? Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's it's that 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 is like tough in like relationship building with like other people, right? So like yeah. if my friends, if I've if I feel like I've built a certain expectation of like who I am with my friends, sometimes with certain people, if I say something and they're like, what? I'm like, dude, what do you mean? We've like if if they misunderstand me, I'm like, yo, we've I've been speaking for like ever. What do you mean you misunderstood? Me? <laughs> I think I think uh, misunderstanding is one of the most frustrating and yet interesting like opportunities to understand people better. But then it's like, why aren't we connecting on this? Like, but then mm -hmm. I will say like the wisdom from my younger siblings, like shout out. Sometimes I call them. I'm like, yo, is Gen Z doing this? Like, I need an update. Like, what's mm -hmm. going on here? But that it is okay. But I think Arab culture plays a role in this because like there's like the little kids table, the older cousins table, mm -hmm. the adult table. And like you have to graduate. You have to earn your right to speak. Yep. Like there's a lot of like adults are talking. The patriarch is talking. Like don't talk. Mm -hmm. Grandpa's talk. Like even my dad, like I try to explain to people like God rest my grandparents' souls. All of them are past now. But like one of the things that's unique about it is like I've never seen like when my dad and his brothers like if my grandpa's talking, like you're not talking like unless, you know, cause he's the leader of the family yeah. and you're listening to him. Like, I just remember distinctly growing up surrounded by a bunch of people in a living room or family room. And then there would be like my grandpa and we'd be mm -hmm. like listening to the elders and they'd be telling us things and it would be very wonderfully, like it was very cool. And even though, you know, that bubble necessarily like isn't liberal enough for me, it is still like yeah. home to me where I'm like, oh, there's something here that they're passing down to us. But I think this like level of earning is a little confusing. But then I wonder how much like trauma plays a role in this. Because if you get an elder that hasn't resolved their own trauma trying to give you advice about something, it can feel very disconnecting. Like, how yeah. can you even understand me? Like when I came out, there was basically like no one who could understand it in my family. It was just very confusing for all of them. And they didn't know what to do. And they were like, take down your YouTube videos. Don't talk about it. Like, this isn't something we understand. And I was like, I know. I'm going to force us to understand it because, like, I can't be the only one. And, like, of course I'm not the only one. But obviously, it's like somebody has to make that decision to force the communication. But I still wonder to this day, like, how much struggle is my family going to have to see the queer kids in the family? And I think that does come down to like seeing a person's experience and understanding it, which I think ultimately comes down to all the miscommunication that we're having. So even like with friends, some like, you know how Sneeko said, when, when I came out as a, like, I came out as a cuck and you guys like wouldn't let me live it down. He doesn't understand yeah. like, because they don't see you, but they, you don't even see you. You don't even know why you were there. You don't even know why you were doing anything you were doing. Mm -hmm. And so like you're choosing a group of people as your foundation of friends that can't see you. Yeah, you're gonna feel alone, dude. You're gonna feel alone. So what do you think about that in terms of like, because earlier you said, I guess, like, all of them are relationships, but then you have like, I'm thinking out loud here, you've got the hierarchies of friendships. Hmm, but then you don't want to make new friends. Do you, Why don't you do you want to make do you not want to make new friends because you don't have to do the work for them to see you? Yeah, so I had like, um, so within growing up, so my 20s were crazy. I had a wild 20s, okay? Mm. Um, I had a girlfriend at the time. I moved off for college for the first time. I was rushing a frat. Mm. Now, I don't care to cheat. Like, that, that's not, like, that, that makes no, that, that's never really made sense to me. Like, mm. I just break up with a person if I don't want to be with the person. Sure. But I didn't, like, so, but I wanted to rush the frat because I wanted friends. Because so I was like, I'm moving, I'm moving out. This is probably the easiest way to like meet groups of people, be it be included in something. Like, okay. So there was a huge struggle between my girlfriend at the time being like hyper jealous every time I went anywhere, and it would be a huge issue. She's like, ah, oh, these girls. I'm like, yo, I'm hanging out with a group of guys right now. I don't like, I don't know what you're yelling at, and it's it's getting frustrating because I'm getting all this pressure. And then I'm trying to like do this like life thing with like uh, uh, the college thing. We're meeting friends. So I watched Greek having before I went to like college. I was like, oh, this, you meet someone, you get a big brother. Every, this is like mentors for life. And it just never, I never click. I could never click with any of the guys in that way. Yeah. But I clicked with a lot of the girls in the sororities. Like I had a big sister. Mm. We, she, we hung out all the time. We did like movie nights. We did like stuff like that. Like it went dinners. And it was always just like, 
Yeah, it was just, yeah, strange, like, in growing up for the guy. I'm sorry, I forgot. I completely forgot what the question was now. No, no, no. This is interesting because, okay, you keep saying something that keeps standing out to me. And I want to explore it, but, of course, it's, like, if it's too private. What is this – what is this thing you're chasing when you say, like, I'm making friends, but I'm not making the friends in the way that I think – I'm making them like you keep saying like I'm, I wanted this thing and it's not happening for me. What mm -hmm. is that? I wanted that that bond, that connection to like one person, that connection mm. to a group. I wanted to feel I wanted to feel accepted within like any like within a community because mm. growing up, like I said, I was like ostracized. I was like the white boy growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, I, I never had an individual best friend, so I'd have like maybe groups of friends. And then, like, w whether or not that person, like, left, it would, like, short, they were, like, short-lived. Mm. So I wanted, like, a brotherhood, right? I wanted, uh, like, um, I've always thought that, like, young men need mentors. Mm, yeah, for sure. I love Right? I think it's important. I didn't, ha like, I love my dad, but he, he isn't the greatest mentor, right? We have, like, our own issues. Um... So I just never like I so so I think like growing up I was always like seeking like some one someone to mentor a partner like like a like a, a sidekick yeah like me 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 the dynamic duo type situation yeah. and because I could never find that specifically with one individual person I felt like I couldn't find friendship with anyone. Okay, that's interesting because I I I I don't know if you saw me. Who knows when I talk about these things? But I have a theory that. The adult friend group is a myth of television that only occurs in very select communities in which you are lucky enough to have like your location in the same proximity and you raise kids in the same like moral expectation of culture, like the same way. Because like even I have siblings and we always joke about like buying out whole neighborhoods and living in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But then when put into practice, when we are roommates or we live near each other, we realize like, oh, we're going to raise our kids different and that's going to make us fight. And we've seen our uncles and aunties fight. We're trying to avoid that. So how do we avoid it? And a big part of it is like distance makes the heart grow fonder. But then that begs the question, why do I feel closer to you when I'm like less near you? And it's kind of like because I can go to the grocery store and a tank top and my mom doesn't have to catch me at Costco with a skin showing. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I can go to the store without being like, but also there's a part of me that loves running into my mom at the store. Yeah. Because I just think it's so fun. Like, oh, my mom's here and I'm here and I love my mom. But also I can't dress. Like when I go to my parents' house, there's a dress code. Like I can't just dress okay. in like whatever I want. You know, my parents have very- I understand that. Yeah. So <sighs> there's something about that where sometimes the closest people are also the people you can't be fully yourself with, but yet you can be yourself in a way that is so intimate. Like I can be myself with my parents in a way that is so beyond intimate compared to what I could ever do on stream. And yet mm -hmm. stream might know things about me that my parents don't know. But they will never I'm, know me the way my parents know me. I think I deal with the same thing with like my family. I've in like, so now that I'm in my 30s with my cousins, with my aunts, uncles, whatever, we'll have uh, conversations, arguments, whatever it may be. And I've kind of like enforced myself as um, not the black sheep, but the psychedelic sheep oh. in my family. Like, <laughs> I've done I went, I've done I've done the acid. I've, I've, I've gone out. I've, I've, I've been I've done the hippie lifestyle. I did mm -hmm. it for like I, I did a whole summer where I didn't wear any shoes what? like at all. Whoa, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shut yeah. up. That's so interesting. Actually, I'm a massage therapist, so it was like kind of easy for me to just dive into this like. Lately, oh, you know dope skis mm -hmm. that's so i did not see that for you what yeah that's so interesting um, yeah and so um like i've definitely made it a point where no i've when i was when i was when i was in college i dropped out i was mm -hmm. studying interpersonal communications and then i was doing human gender and sexuality oh cool. and so one of the things was like one of the conversations was like hey what if like i had a pro i had a project where i asked three people that i knew at the time in my surrounding like hey what if i came out as gay Mm. And the answers that you hear now versus the answers that you hear back then were so different. So it was like, because we were like 19 year old boys, it was like, well, no, I'd beat the gay out of you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I'd stop hanging out with you. Blah, 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 blah. But now, if you ask like the people, now if you ask the same people that I've had those conversations with, now, like, hey, what if your kid was gay? Mm -hmm. It's a whole different dynamic. And I think that's a lot, I think that has a lot to do with how much I've argued and defended and like shown like different like uh uh perspectives on things yeah. yeah which i think is important because so for you leaving 
or because you're already more introverted, leaving for you was maybe a better decision. For me, I don't know if I, well, one, I wouldn't want to live in an area where it was just me and one person and like, I don't have this like network of people. Village, I like yeah. my network. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to live in the same city as sure. my network, but I do want my kids, for example, to grow up like within that realm. Fair. Now, the whole like aunties and uh, uncles arguing thing, I completely understand because we grew up with the exact same thing. But I think because of that, luckily, my family have like, we've kind of like, so it's my, my cousins that I feel like they're like my, my siblings. It's four, uh, three girls, one boy. Mm -hmm. And we've almost like decided like, hey, like we, we're going to accept each other. We're not going to go through the same bullshit that they went through because yeah. our kids don't need to deal with like our issues. And then already we have like, we have a, um, one of my cousin had married a Cuban girl who is from Cuba and had a kid. Mm. So there was already huge, like, like bubble burst in yeah. like that regard, which is like, everyone's is typically expecting, Oh, you're going to marry a Lebanese girl and she'll be Muslim and blah, 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 blah. blah and no kid coming, but no, right. like, but like, and watching my family, like deal with that and integrate with that has been amazing. Or even watching like, um, something like, we have little niece. I have like my little nieces, cousin nieces. Mm -hmm. Watching my aunts. So one of them, one of my cousin nieces, is like a little bit like uh, she's she. You know, Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. She's like the girl from Wreck It Ralph. She mm -hmm. just wants to fight, and she's a. Br so like I watched my aunt told she's like stop doing that. You're you know you're a girl. You shouldn't do this. Blah blah blah. So like you know, having pull, pull you know pulling my aunt over to the side. I'm like hey what do you think gives a kid more of a complex being what they like you know having fun and then like maybe she's just more of a tomboy girl like what's mm -hmm. the likelihood of them being hands or do you think it's going to give them a complex where you tell them to not do something they're going to go home and like they're five years old six years old they're going to sit in their room and they're going to internalize it well i like doing these things maybe i'm not mm -hmm. what do you think is going to give them more of a thing and then she like watching that click in their heads for me was very like important to like stay within the family and it kind of like because even if i wasn't gay i at least understood that like there's possibly someone in my family yeah. i want to make it I, I do like being like the standpoint to make things a little bit easier for them yeah you are a bit of the uh breaking generational curses person like yeah. you are and i think i make a concerted effort to that like i remember when i was like 15 i asked my mom like would you rather have a dead child or a gay child and she goes, a dead child, because a dead child would go to heaven and a gay one won't. And I was like, damn. And I hadn't come out, of course. So I internalized a lot of that. And I was like, <gasps> and then as I got older and I made these, like, I think, efforts and strides to, like, keep my family and like, hey, if you don't update your stuff, I'm not asking you to be pro-gay, but if you don't update your stuff, you're not going to have a relationship, right, with your kids. And so it's yeah. great to see my family grow and, like, my parents change over the years. And like, again, they're Catholic. They're, they're like the Chaldeans. Like I said, Chaldeans are Catholic mm -hmm. Assyrians. They're Catholic and they've been Catholic forever. And everybody in my family's Catholic. And that's just like the lineage of my people. And it's not like, it's very uncommon for them to like not be Catholic. And so I never expect my parents not to be Catholic and mm -hmm. I never expect them to pr be pro LGBT, but I do an imp an impressed every day that they learned that their kids aren't Catholic. And so the expectations of expecting them to do that is like unfair, you know, it's like unfair. And even though my mom always says once a Catholic, always a Catholic, you know, she knows like I'm not, I've left the church when I was 19. I left the church a very long time ago, you know, I'm 35 mm -hmm. now. And so, and I married somebody who's very atheistic. So realistically, like him and I are never going to have that relationship, even though I moved to a very Catholic country. Yeah. It was not a sign that I would be Catholic girl. It was a sign that I like, Hey, at least I kind of know what's going on here. And I think seeing my parents grow up and change has been, you know, everything. But I know that it came through the stubbornness of me saying, like, mm -hmm. I will explain this to you until you get it at least enough to make peace. And I, I see that's that now. Actually, that's super important. I think it, I think it goes both ways. Mm. I think when, like, you're coming out to, like, your parents, I think for a lot of people, it's like you 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 feel entitled to this acceptance. You want this acceptance. They're your parents. They should totally. accept you. And like, ultimately they should. I understand that. Mm. But I think you realized, and maybe some, uh, like you realized young that their world also just got shattered for a second. Oh, for sure. And so, so you took that into consideration, which I think a lot of people don't. And I think they internalize that reaction and it's, they shouldn't like your parents are obviously going to freak out mm. like with most things generally right they're gonna they're probably gonna freak out if you're telling them something that like alters like what the, this whole idea of what especially if they've built an idea of you for 15 years oh 15 no think, to like, be clear that was me at 15 but like i didn't even come to 
uh, an awareness of my parents' journey until I was like 27. Yeah. It took okay. me a oh, long okay. time to humanize my parents and to radically accept that they are mm. also going through a journey of seeing yeah. their kids and not even one kid, 10 kids. Yeah. Go through a journey. So just like shout out to all the people who are still struggling. I certainly took mm -hmm. my time humanizing my parents. Well, but yes, I my, did eventually. My realization of that was around like 25, 26 when I realized like, oh, blaming my parents for everything right. does nothing. Right. And right. they're also just humans who exactly th they, ha they had a kid and moved to a country where they barely spoke the language mm -hmm. and had no, no idea what was going on. And I was like, oh, oh, like something clicks where you're like, oh, you got to give them some grace, too. Yes. Because, like, yes. you know, if you're an idiot, what are they? You know? And that's OK. That was one of the most powerful bubble pops of my life was being like, oh, my God, are my parents just me but old? Like, because mm -hmm. I'm going to like if I if my partner and I, and I had decided to make a family like our kids would have grown up at some point and been like, I didn't like how you did this. And I'm like, fuck. And like I my parents made this like they're also immigrants. They came to this country. They like made this perfect bubble for themselves. They're like, look how great we are. We have a family yeah. and a business and look how good of a life we're giving our kids. Yeah. And then their kids are growing up like, mm, I don't know if yeah. I like this bubble. And they're like, but mm -hmm. I. But I did, I made it. And I'm like, I know. And I'm like, now I'm realizing, like, I want my mom and dad to have their bubble. It's so beautiful. The life they built themselves is so beautiful. And mm -hmm. I want them to have that. And I think, like, I'm grateful that every day, like, we talk all the time on the phone. And they're always just like, I, I'm glad you're happy. And I'm glad you, even though you had to move to Europe, I'm glad that you are making your own home with your partner and having your life and making your own like ecosystem. Like your, your own. parents are growing with you. They are. They absolutely are. are you kidding? Oh my yeah. God. They just told me that they put the gay kids back on the will. So we're back in the will. Fuck yeah. yeah Good so like, on that's, them. And that's like a big too. deal. That's like a big deal. It is. It's a very big deal. I'm very happy for you. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's a nice gesture, you know? And like, even my dad invited me, my partner to stay at their house. Cause like, usually they want you to be married in the Catholic church before you sleep together in the house but mm -hmm. like i was like we're not getting married in the church and they were like okay that's because you respect the catholic religion and you wouldn't do it just for show i was like exactly and they go okay you can stay at our house and i'm like okay and like it's kind of nice because okay. i don't want to disrespect their religion and yeah. pretend you know and i also don't want to disrespect i just like I, the idea is i don't want to disrespect anybody but i want to live my own mm -hmm. life and i want yeah. us to come together when we can and that goes for my friends as well by the way i don't want to disrespect your choices but also we don't we're not making the same ones so there's gonna come there's gonna be some tension you know i've so my girlfriend's puerto rican like i said she was a jehovah's mm. witness left so on and so forth so like i'm muslim yeah so like my parents want me to get married like religiously blah, blah, sure. blah. and in the in their mind the expectation is like conversion for her oh, right oh i was gonna ask if she was muslim yeah that's interesting no 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 she's uh she's just kind of like doing her own thing right now where mm -hmm. everyone's kind of explaining i'm not necessarily like religious particularly i was just sure. born into it i, I culturally muslim this is a of new term the, the, the new term so we've been having talks and so initially i was like well obviously i don't expect you to convert but there's like this saying that i would like if you said right and like we but like obviously i don't expect anything but when we have a conversation she goes well actually no i don't want to just lie mm. to anyone and saying these these terms i don't i don't think that's respectful either sort of thing. And I was terrified of bringing it up because, like, you know, this is the first time I've even thought about having this conversation with my parents. And um, so as much as I like breaking generation, generational curses, I also understand, like, who they are. And some yeah. things just aren't going to change or they're never going to be able to understand certain things. But I was totally surprised in, like, bringing it up to, like, my mom. Mm. She was like, oh, I actually really appreciate the fact that, like, you know, she doesn't just want to lie and blah, blah, blah. And then honestly, like... Yeah, like, if she wants to explore, she can explore. She can always ask me whatever questions she needs. And, like, uh, me and my girlfriend have theological arguments all love the it. fucking time. Love that. All the time. Like, we love discussing it because, like, in my world, I'm like, well, look, no, I, I believe all the religions. I'm like, well, like, they all happened. Something happened. Someone had a conversation. Mm. I don't know necessarily if you need to follow them, like, to this, like, T. Like, I mean, you, you, you know, all these stories, they come from a little bit of somewhere. And it's just, like, having the discussions of, like, her like what what beliefs she grew up with and then like introducing like muslim beliefs and like she's like learning about like these these things and these ideas and it's like that's cool having those discussions are honestly some of our funnest discussions we lose track of time i love that so, like miss yeah and it's uh so to me it was like uh one once i think once i found the like the person i was good with i was more okay with 
the idea that like oh all these like little traditional things that i had in my mind don't necessarily need to like go in that exact way and if i have this part and partner that i'm building like a life with if i want to start like a life i can't be like living under like I, i'm starting the family now that now mm. i'm the head of like the like, you know like we're, we're the new heads of a different family yeah and like i'm it's, it is leaving your old family in like a way and it's not because like it's like well now i don't listen to you now we do things our way and do you either accept yeah. it or you don't um which is so like the relationship things which is so having a relationship to me is a friendship that just like with a person that you're attracted to that's really mm -hmm. like all it breaks down to me is like a really good friendship and you're attracted to this person that is a relationship to me and then if you choose you know if you choose if like uh you want to be monogamous whatever maybe that's your relationship that you choose so in like meeting this person and like accepting like a like it's like it was almost like oh i found my best friend that i was looking for for this whole like time mm -hmm. which like yeah it kind of fills up like it, fill, it filled in a little circle for me where i'm like okay i feel like feel i feel good here yeah I feel good here. yeah i always say like i feel like the best kind of relationship is like the resume and the va va voom so like the whatever romantic sexual compatibility means to you but morals mm -hmm. and values and having the yep. same outlook like my partner and i always laugh like what if i come home and i tell you like i believe in god and i think we should go to church he's like can i get you evaluated just to double check you're okay and i was like yeah you should probably do that though because it would be so out of my character but also mm -hmm. we talk about these things because we did get together with an understanding of our beliefs about the world. We did get together and decide to be married because of mm -hmm. our outlook on life. And we do talk about everything. I mean, even this whole past this weekend with everything happening with Trump, it's like we sat down and we like had conversations and we we've been talking about we've never done talking. We could talk all the time. It's actually really yeah. frustrating when you have to pee and you're like, I, I got to pee. Stop talking. Yeah. I got to pee. Yeah. But like you get so excited. And there's so much to talk about. And I feel so grateful because I come from a family that's just like always talking and it feels so good. It feels like a, a if it is a home. And I, I'm sure the Quran has this as well. But like, you know, they say in the Bible, you leave your mother and father and cling to your husband or a spouse or yeah. your partner. And it feels that way. It feels like I we really have like our own little family here. And it, you know, going back to like, if we had kids, we would have wanted that village for them too. If we had had, if we made different decisions in our marriage, we would have made different decisions with everybody because it would have been about more than just us. And so it feels mm -hmm. interesting it just being us because it kind of allows it. Like my parents always joke, um, they made their kids so independent, they all moved away. And that's kind of yeah. true. Like, except for three siblings, like all of their kids live out of state. And that's a pretty okay. big deal. Like, and it is a big deal to us. Like, I just had this realization, Ali. Oh, my God. I just realized that if I only see my parents once a year for the next 20 years, that's like 20 more times. 20 times. Yeah. I was that just is, about to ask you, do you feel offensive. any weird guilt about I don't. That? No. You know what I don't? I don't feel guilty. I feel mm -hmm. selfishly sad where I'm like, I, I want to see my parents. Okay. Like, I want to... I miss my parents all the time and I call them all the time. We FaceTime or whatever it's called. Like I, I'm always, you know, and I just tell them like, I really miss you. But also it sucks because like traveling from Europe to America isn't cheap and nobody's got like no. four grand a year to put towards traveling and all these other things. So the time that you have to take off from doing it. Yeah. Oh, this is an everyday job, girl. I miss mm -hmm. if I even miss three days, my income like YouTube is one of those jobs where yeah. like you got to do it every day and I don't make enough money mm -hmm. to take a lot of time off. No, I make great money, guys. Thank you so much. But like, you know what I mean? It's like it's you got to do it every day. So even taking that time off, like I just don't have it. So I told my family, like, I won't have time till maybe the end of 2025, maybe 2026. But I am thinking about it and I do want to make an effort and I would love to make enough money to come every six months and figure out how to work while I'm there. And because I don't, I never imagined myself only seeing my parents 20 more times. That's not enough. That's like, oh. and I told my siblings who live near them, I was like, you need to see them and don't take for granted because, you know, we've seen enough of our family die. We've seen our grandparents die. We've seen yeah. the generations, the older generations got to go. And one day we'll be the adults, but right now our parents are the adults that we rely yeah. on. And like, we need to remember that. And so, yeah, it's it like, it makes me cry when I think about my parents dying, obviously. But I also know, like, I love that they respect me enough to let me live my life. But also because they know this, they are also making more of an effort in our relationship because mm. they're like, oh, Brittany's not coming back. And I was like, I don't think I'm coming back. Like, we're trying to live in Europe full time. So, yeah. Oh. 
uh, yeah, I'm making, I'm putting together paperwork right now to like continue my visa stay here to be here full time and for the long haul. So um, maybe America when we're old, but not during my parents' lifetime, probably, maybe, who knows? See, see but me, that's me, a big deal. Me and, partner, me and my partner were just having this conversation with everything that's going on in like in America. Yeah. It's always like, oh my God, Greece or Italy or Spain mm. just sounds so much nicer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just just having a beach and food and not having this like competitive yeah. like lifestyle. Yeah. Right. And and we talk about it. I, I do deal with like, I want my kids so because I think because I felt like lonely and I didn't have a friend, but I had always had my cousins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want that for my kid for to sure. just always have their like friend, but it's just like at like at the detriment of what though? Like mm. what what am I what am I giving up lifestyle wise or like even like lifestyle for my kids wise? Like their future, what would I be giving up by trying to stay close yeah. to like family or friends? And it's just always a back and forth that I deal with. It's like what what do, like what do you do? I mean, obviously you made your decision, right? And how was you know, like how was that pending. for you? Was it, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, yeah. So, yeah. like, was it, was it like difficult for you to like decide to like move to Europe, or was it just kind of like, you know what? I love this person. Let's just do this. So this is what we did. Like, you're my we partner. we yeah. what we did is we. I said, okay, let's make a pros and cons list separate, and we'll come together with our lists. So we both mm-hmm. went to our respective you know apartments, and I was making my list, and he made his, and then we did a call because you know he was in Europe and I was in America, and yeah. we went through our pros and cons list, and our list almost matched. Okay. And we said, okay, sounds like Europe is, it is. Because we we called lawyers. We talked to immigration lawyers for both places. We talked to our families and we said, hey, we're trying to make a decision about where to live, where to primarily put our efforts. Because just because he's my husband doesn't mean he can just come into America. There's so much paperwork that goes yeah, into all of this. It, there's so much. So I said, you know, we made our pros and cons list and Europe was going to be the easiest route. And it was the easiest for our living situation, for my health concerns, for the paperwork. And so we chose it. And plus, his family is here. Mm-hmm. And what about his family? Like, well, no mean, matter that, yeah. like no matter what we choose, someone's family gets abandoned. So what, we're, what we decided on is like, well, my parents have more kids and more family near them. And his parents have less. So let's be the more for them. Because we obviously, like, I believe in taking care of family. So my brother's going to take yeah. care of my parents and I'm going to take care of his parents and we're going to take care That's of his. Great. So it's like we think about our elders and we think about how to be participants in the family. So it was a hard decision, but it was also just the best decision. We had to make it. So we made it. And then now it's this idea of like, okay, how do we put into place an accessibility for my siblings to see me, for my parents to travel, for us to go there, for, and it's all about, we just talk to our families about it. That's what we do. Even when we were courting, yeah. when we were first dating, we did like a little courting kind of relationship where it was very serious from day one. Meet yeah. the families. Let's fly out. Let's have the conversations. Mm-hmm. Like there's going to be, I don't want to date you for two years. Like I'm I'm good where yeah. I am. I want to know. And yeah. it was very much a family affair that was also ultimately our choice. And that's what our life has been like choosing Europe. And it's been great. Croatia is a very beautiful country. They've been very good to me. The The people have been yeah. very helpful here. And it is it is affordable. Like it is affordable in a way that I would feel America is out of our reach in a lot yeah. of ways. And I know that because my siblings tell me how much they pay for rent. And I'm like, Ooh, mm-hmm. girl, mm-mm. like that sounds stressful. But we would make it work anywhere in the same way that you just have to as an adult. But yeah, it was a, it was a big deal to move here. But it was we're very happy here. I was just, yeah, man, these, the, that's something I've been, I've been thinking about. And for the longest, I've been trying to convince my family. Like, hey, look, if we just all just did one of these, <laughs> We already immigrated easier. once. We already immigrated yeah, you once. Did, so just did it once. Do it again. We, <laughs> we already have a Spanish speaker with us. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. has her dad over there. Like, let's just, no, it just, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely something to think about. And like, as I'm getting more and more into this, like, like more into like, so you were asking me, like, do I separate, like, friends from, like, like the relationship I have? Well, I was really good friends with um, with her mm-hmm. before we got into a relationship. Sometimes, sometimes there is a little bit where she's like, hey, I'm your girlfriend, <laughs> not your friend. Because sometimes I'll just say things. Mm. One, like, because I see her in a different light, I'm like, I, I almost forget that we ha- she has, like, three years of info on me. True. Oh, that's interesting. Right? So, oh. Right? 
So it's just like uh, it's 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 getting into that like bag where like sometimes I'm like, okay, st stop debating with her so much. Should, this is not the person you're debating. This is a person you have That's a conversation funny. with, right? Like this isn't someone you tell what to do in like a sarcastic manner anymore. Mm. This is more like you have to like take things more into consideration, listen a little bit better, give give actual like constructive things, and then like, yeah, and then her realizing some some things with me like as well like like sometimes uh, like I'm very sarcastic. Mm. And sometimes she'll get like a little offended. I'm like, hey, like we've known each other for a while. I've been this stuck. I think, I think, I think this is okay. And she'll and she clicks. She's like, yeah, that is true. I'm just yeah. like expecting. It's it's a, it's a little bit weird. It's a little it bit is. weird, but honestly, I like I love it. It's yeah. honestly amazing. Yeah. And I think for me, the most amazing part is realizing like she can fuck up. I can fuck up. And oh my god, it's not the end of the fucking world. What does that mean? What does that mean? You she like, can't if, fuck up, but you can't. No, no, she can. She can. Oh, you both she can, can fuck up. I got we you. We can we can fuck up, and it's not like the end of the world. It's Amen. a very much like a conversation. Like, hey, Amen. I didn't like this. If mm. we could not do this next time, why did you uh, let me explain? It. Like, hey, this is why I did this, but I get it. You don't like it. We can do for sure. That to me has been like, and if there's any advice I give anyone in a relationship, look for that. That mm. that to me is very important. Like. The yeah. ability to be able to have make mistakes without the other person just losing their shit. Yeah. And then yeah. vice versa as well. Because you got to give grace to one another, especially in like a relationship. It's a big deal. You know, it's hard to talk about sort of like um, how different it is being. Because you can't like I couldn't believe it unless I saw it. But I knew in my 20s that I was in the wrong relationships when I was like, we're not communicating the way my parents even communicate. Like my parents have never like. I've noticed that my parents, if they had a problem, they tackled the problem. They didn't tackle each other. Mm, they never like that's turned that's on each other. And so I, when I was in relationships where we were turning on each other, I was like, hey, something is wrong. Now, I also will say this in terms of boundaries with friends. I feel like we should never be, it's in a, we shouldn't be turning on each other because like we're adults mm. and we're doing our own thing. But sometimes I do think friends get a little bit too like, I want you to like be more like me. And I was like, you're not my mother. Only my mother can demand I be more Catholic. Okay. That's like the rule. <laughs> my parents are allowed to make demands that are unreasonable, not my friends. Right. Yeah. But with my partner, one of the things that we even had to negotiate was like, how jokey are we going to be? Are we going to do pranks yeah. on each other? Do we feel comfortable mm. doing this with each other? And then I realized I was like, Ooh, yeah, no, something I realized. And this was like an epiphany I had is I want different relationships with different people even if I think of you so wonderfully and close and intimately, like I noticed with my littlest brother, we have a very different dynamic than me and my other friends. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I've noticed that like people think I have to have the same dynamic with all, everybody in order for us to be close. And mm -hmm. I realized like, oh, that's so interesting. So I had the situation happen where like um, a friend saw me interacting with another friend and they were like, oh, you guys are very physical and name calling. I want to be like that with you. And I was like, oh, no, because when we do it, it just feels mean. When we do it, it feels mm. funny. And I realized it was because the dynamic we had formed was a different type of banter. Like there was banter, but it was different. And I realized like that's how I kind of had a huge epiphany this last year with friendship. Like I need to explain to people that what we create together is isolated in a bubble. And it's not about what I have with other people. It's about what I have with you. Mm -hmm. And same with my partner where – even I don't want the internet to ever think like I have to have a relationship like Britney's. No, I'm just telling you how my relationship is going. So if you like anything about it, you can kind of you can take it. But if you don't like anything about it, throw it away. And I realized like, oh, that's really funny with friends. Even people think like, oh, you must be closer to this person. And if I act more like this person will be closer. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, like that's not how that works. And so I think like all of these dynamics, like friendship and intimacy and partnership, I think what I've learned the most is it gets down to, are you really seeing each other enough to form something unique between the two of you? It's not about other people, right? Like Marshall and Lily going back to that and Ted and Barney, they have very different relationships yeah. and dynamics together mm -hmm. for a reason. They're different people. I think it's that like, um, <clears throat> so like, it's like people think they're, they're, they're their true selves all the time i don't think people mm. realize like amongst different groups mm -hmm. you are gonna code switch you're gonna change up and i think when they see that in like an individual oh, friend great point they're like they're like oh wait is that who you really are so are you a diff point. are you a fake person with me great point and then Fuck. like well and then it's like well no that's not that's not what it is it's just like 
I met this person under completely different circumstances in a different area in a different like light. Yeah. Whereas like, I don't know, like, so like my, like my, uh, I go to electric forest. It's like a, 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 a music festival. It's like oh. a camping music festival. Oh, I bet I've Have seen you, that on TikTok. I've seen something like that. I've seen it. Yeah. 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 Anyone who's in Michigan, I highly recommend campsite. It's less of, it's less focused on the stages, more focused on like, they build a little city and mm -hmm. everyone there is in like the same vibe. Right. Cool. Everyone there is like hippie, raver, you know, that type of thing. The friends that I've met there, in what universe would yeah. you ever be like the friends I met in college versus the friends I met exactly. in like growing up just in like my life, my neighborhood? It's, it, it, it couldn't be. Exactly. And sometimes it is like difficult to watch someone else, especially if once again, I think a lot of people feel closer to somebody than that person feels to them. Mm. And I think that's because either they're yearning for it or just in their like, like, so with the internet, Clicks and groups are very important mm. because that's how you like strive and grow, right? Yeah. So like you're saying like in your career, you see it as a career, but for a lot of these people, the internet is a lifestyle. The people mm. that they meet, that they make groups with, like that is that those are their friends. These are these are my business partners and my friends, which is probably why the drama happens so much. Mm. Or it's like the the whole orbit thing, right? Like you're yeah. in this orbit, you like and so I think it's like there are people who so you're I, I would say you're the difference versus like I'd say majority of people on the internet are looking for like parasocial relationships they are looking for friends they are looking to collab with people they are doing to do I that want friends and so and I they, want to collab I just want boundaries <laughs> well well boundaries are that this is a new word that people have like picked up and, and used okay I'm, I'm glad they're using it but once again, if the idea is that you grow up watching this specific type of thing and you think this is ideal friendship and then sure. you end up getting into this world where you're like, I, I, you're, you're like, once again, you're, you're entitled, you're in need of it. Mm -hmm. You want it very right. quickly. I agree. I agree. And so that's, I, yeah, I think that's more what it is, is they want this connection quickly because one, they feel lonely. <sighs> And then they're like, well, if I can connect with someone, I'm less lonely. And yeah. then this, that person has to be lonely too because they're doing the same thing I am. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I won't lie that I'm always, okay, like I'm always on the hunt for people I can have good conversation with. Because first of all, that's what I watch on the internet. And second yeah. of all, like it is the best way for people to learn other people live differently and like it's interesting and we're sharing information. And I think that that is always what I'm looking for. But I'm also looking for appropriateness. Like be appropriate. Like you be want it or See it? I think you want organic. So something I noticed on TikTok with mm -hmm. the community building, there's mm -hmm. have you have do you do TikTok at all? Like I scroll through it. I'm a consumer of TikTok for okay. sure. You've seen the live battles, right? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So something I noticed because I have like a twenty four thousand following, but like other people who do these like trends and they have a three hundred and fifty thousand following. Mm -hmm. I stopped posting for eight months. I lost a thousand followers. Mm -hmm. They stopped posting for a day or two, they're losing tens of thousands of followers. Whoa. With my following, with my lives, I don't do the live battles, which encourages people to come in by the core. I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with like the chat. Mm. We like, I've built like, so there was a difference between building a community, mm -hmm. which I think you've done. Yeah. Right. I think, I think you're, you're not, you're not trying to clip farm. You're not trying to like search for drama in order right. to like drive, like you want right. organic growth. You want a chat. You actually right. want a community. Right. I think that is like the difference. Like there are a few people that are on the internet that are trying to build like an actual community mm. because they're, maybe you're not concerned with being a million sub channel. Maybe like a hundred thousand subs is enough. That's a lot of, For sure. that's a lot of subs. Mm -hmm. but, I th but I think the majority of people get on here and they're like, well, no, if I have a hundred thousand, I can get a million. And if mm. this is this is how these people get them. The, the people that I watched, well, they engage in this type of like sure. relationships. They in this type of rhetoric, and this is how you in, this is how you get the flow. I think you're searching for organic. Yeah, that's true. And then other people are just searching for what is like available. Mm, I realized that when I did a collab with a little motherfucker like a month or two ago, and he like clipped it weird i messaged him. I was like, hey, I'm not trying to like farm you, and he was like, no, yeah. no, but it's better for views. And I was like. Oh. What? And I was like so yeah. confused. And I was like, okay, I know it's better for views. Like networking and clapping is always better for views. But also you're taking me out of context. I know it looks like, like I said something I didn't say. And then yep. that sucks. And then people go and ride with it. Like Brittany Simon said this. I was like, I did not say that, bro. Don't you feel bad? I would feel so bad. Like I try really mm -hmm. hard to correct myself. But then again, I am making this little ecosystem, my little community. I love my community. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I realized that. But yes, and that's why I think people do get confused. Like we collabed once. We're close. I'm like, whoa. 
Mm-hmm. We're besties. Somebody slow down. Like you, you know things about me. I know things about you. Now we're friends. And it's very confusing to me. Like it's very mm-hmm. like I my I don't know if I'm just old or if I'm like this is inappropriate. But also it sucks because like I will always take the risk. Like I met I made a new uh, friend through the internet. Um, and we just caught up the other day and we were laughing and I was like, okay, I've decided that it's the healthy to unhealthy ratio. So if you're healthy enough, I think you'll have good boundaries, but if you're unhealthy mm-hmm. enough, you won't. And so I'm looking for people that are in the healthy enough stage to have like really clear boundaries. Cause sometimes people will be like, I heard Brittany Simon say this and now I don't know about her. Now I'm not mm-hmm. sure about her. I'm like, why are you being such a conspiracy theorist? Cause we disagree. Yeah. Why are you doing that? And I realized like, it's an, it's gotta be like, I never hear somebody I disagree with and think like, Oh my God. I just think like, oh, okay. I guess we just don't see eye to eye. Cool. And it's probably because I grew up with a very different family than me. And I've had to Mm -hmm. realize like people aren't crazy because they don't agree with you. Or just wait. Yeah. Because they don't agree with you. Disagree with you. Yeah. 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 Like it's like people are just different guys. And so I realized that there is um, a little bit of a, I don't think people can discern on the internet who's safe or not, myself included sometimes. Because mm-hmm. I, I always assume people are as healthy as I am. And then I really realized, like, are you not healthy, bro? Like, come, you got to know boundaries. I realized, like, oh, okay, we got to talk about this. It's hard, but I think it's always worth it. I do think it is worth the risk of running into a crazy to meet a really good person. You watched um, iCarly growing up, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay, so the, the, there was the episode with Fred where, like, they had the internet beef. And then she went to confront him. And he's like, what do you mean? Have you not seen your views? And then they were like, yeah. oh, my God, this is amazing. Let's keep doing it. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people grew, like, grew up internalizing all these TV shows that they watch. They get to finally act them out. Mm-hmm. They're like, once again, it's the idea that they think they know you because they're in the same field, right? So For the sure. idea, like, when you're, gro- when you're growing up, if you're, like, you go to college, this is when, like, you're supposed to find who you are. So you start joining these clubs and these groups or you pick a major and then now you're surrounded with these, like, like-minded people. Same thing with, like, the internet. Their For idea sure. is that, like, well, she'll, she's going to love the views. Why wouldn't she love these views? Look at these numbers. And you're just like, mm, no. So, like, for you, when you're, like, when you're searching, like, what is it that, what is it that like, sep- I, I know it was, it was the, you were saying, like, health and this, whatever, but, like, what is, like, a, what's the difference between, like, a friend and, like, an acquaintance? Mm, I struggle with this. Or, like, a work this. partner. I struggle yeah, with it. What is like that difference? I, you know, I've been really, I've even had this conversation with my community where it's like really hard to decide what to call people because mm-hmm. obviously for me, I kind of grew up in this, like everyone's your friend, but nobody is close to you. Yeah. Even if you sleep with them doesn't mean we're close. And so my brain mm-hmm. is like, just cause we've had sex doesn't mean you know anything about me. But then I realize in the community is on the internet. There's always like this blurred line of They've hung out. They've gone to parties together. They know each other. So they must know each other intimately. And I was like, oh, I don't know anything about this person. But then I realized that's because I get along with everybody. Like, I just get along with most people. You know, if you have a bad attitude, I probably won't get along with you. But I literally don't need to see the world like you for me to have fun with you. But that's also, like, made people very confused. Because Mm -hmm. a part of me is like, just because I'm getting along with you doesn't mean we're on the same page or I agree with you. And that confuses people because they think me getting along with them is me saying I'm like, I get you. And I was like, I get everybody. I also get why murders murder people. That doesn't mean I agree with you. Like, I don't agree with you because I get you. So So acquaintance, I guess, is everybody that I've met. And then friends are people that I've established. So what I've been doing, because I ran into this problem, is I've just, I've negotiate. I say, hey, what do you want from me as a friend? Or I'll say like, hey, I don't want to be closer to you. Like, I don't want to do this. DTR, define the relationship. And I know it makes people hurt. I love that. I know it hurts people's feelings, but genuinely, I feel like you got to learn how to be appropriate. Yeah, I think you like ultimately we should be able to have these conversations. Like, I've run into issues with people where like um, they'll feel entitled to telling me how to stream. And I'm like, like people who feel like oh, like I can give you advice on your stream. Like I, sh- I would do it this way if I was you. I was like, are you a streamer? Mm. Are you online? And even if you are online, like why are you telling another streamer how to stream? And I realized like there's a difference between saying like, oh, this would be better for business or oh, my audience lets me know, oh, Brittany, we prefer these videos over these videos. I'm like, cool, we'll make a compromise. Yeah. And a difference between someone saying like, I didn't like the way you streamed the other day because this is my opinion and it should be the same. And I'm like, oh. Mm. And I think what ultimately happens on the internet is like people think, I represent them. 
but I only represent me. So when you're friends with people on the internet, there's this assumption, like people are always like, and I hate this, by the way, when people do this, I know Abba's your boy and everything, but like, why don't you call him out? First of all, Abba and I are adults and he's not my boy. Okay. But if you want to call him my boy, that's fine with that. Too. I'm fine with that too. But like, it's one of those things where like, I, I do disagree with him and he disagrees with me and then we agree and then we talk it out and we're good. But the fact that the internet wants me to constantly go after him, or if I don't go after him, I'm doing it because I'm his friend. It's like they can't make a decision. So I don't let them make the decision anymore. It's not up to them how I treat people I know in my life. But it is interesting that we don't know where the line is. It's not like it, I've never met Abba's family. He's never met my family. Do we check yep. in with each other and make sure we're doing good? Yes. He's a very, yeah. like, from what I've seen, a very good person. Yeah. But we can only be so close. And I think people have to yeah. remember that. Like, I don't, people don't, it's not like we talk for hours on the phone and I'm telling him everything about my life. Like, we're adults. We don't have that kind of relationship. So, but we're friends. But we're not. What would calling him out even look like? It'd be making a video, embarrassing him, saying something negative to the public, right? And Which, sometimes if that, we do disagree. Yeah. But, but you guys, I, I feel like when, when you, I feel like you're not out here just like making drama clips about Never. the person if you I feel like if you disagree with someone i you probably disagree in conversation and, and then that's maybe aired out that's like, completely different than well listen i will i've already called out ab and preach in our differences as like no. hey i disagree with this but this is their yeah. opinion and i think yeah. that's so important or like oh this is kyla's opinion and we disagree here but look how good she is here or oh look at tom fullery and like oh look at papa gut like i will name names mm -hmm. but i'm not trying to ruin your lives i know you're all in yeah. like ultimately good people I think, okay, so it's from the audience, you said? I yeah. feel like they're like, okay, well, it's that parasocial like yes, weird thing. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, we are friends with ABBA. Mm -hmm. We, as this community, <laughs> we are friends. The community is friends with ABBA. <laughs> we, as the community, know yeah. that you're the figurehead and you're the speaker. So we're going to tell you what we feel. Hey, can you have this conversation with our friend? Because we can't. I, I do think like, some, some of it is that. I do think some of it is yeah. probably that. And when we're getting along with people, they get really excited because they're like, oh, you know a YouTuber I know? And I'm like, yeah. And then when you don't get along, it's funny. No, I don't mind calling out people. I want to be able to share my opinions no matter what. Actually, one right. of the problems I ran into is like, um, I don't know if you saw recently, Mr. Beast did a, a, a video with like 50 YouTubers and Ludwig mm -hmm. and Logan Paul met each other for the first time, if you know who they are. And mm -hmm. they and Logan goes, hey, I, I think you're a streamer, right? And Ludwig goes, yeah, but just for the record, I've said a lot of shit about you. And he goes, yeah, I figured. I mean, you got it, right? Like, and they talked it out. And that's kind no. of what the relationship I want with people is like, hey, we're good. But also when you make friends with people, some people expect you not to say anything anymore. And I can't handle that. I can't handle that. Because even, I'm sorry, like, I don't want to misunderstand. I want to be able to say exactly how I feel about people and say I love them mm -hmm. anyways. So if my sibling's doing some fucking fucked up shit, I want to say like, my sibling's mm -hmm. an idiot. Look at the fucked up shit. I love them anyways, but that is pretty fucked up. I want to be able to say it, but the problem is, is like, there's an appropriateness to it, obviously. Like airing people's dirty laundry is different than content creators doing things publicly and other people commenting on it. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you're going to do it publicly, I'm going to talk about it. I think, I think there comes like, so Logan Paul, for example, is mm. he's so big sure. that Ludwig talking about him is never going to like, do anything to him he's always just going to be up i think like with within like smaller or like medium-sized creators mm. they feel like oh you ex you're exposing me you're potentially going to shut me down especially if you have like a like a slightly higher following than them mm. right so like i mean you had you had your like uh beef with destiny I don't, sure. i'm not trying to dig into it but like from watching it from the outside right it was like well damn this this person could potentially talk so much shit that mm. it would shut down the smaller channel sure Right. And then he's not even like the large, lar like a, I'd, I'd consider like the medium. Those are like the medium. Sure. And I think within that, so like you're confident in, within uh, amongst yourself because you have like, once again, I believe that you feel you have like more of an organic following. Yeah. 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 So I you were able to, yeah. you're, yeah, you're able to handle that way better than someone who maybe has the same following didn't grow it organically. Ooh. Right. If they did grow it based off of like trends, if they did grow it based off of drama mm. and the bigger drama person shuts them down or someone else does something, mm. it could actually affect them because of the way they've built their audiences. And I think that's what a lot of people on like oh, YouTube, Twitch or whatever are doing. They haven't built this like organic audience. So they're afraid of anyone having any type of criticism of, the, of them. A smaller creator I've seen who's maybe less afraid of, of whatever is uh, President Sunday. Sure. 
So he doesn't have a large following at all, but he gets into altercations or drama with way larger creators and mm -hmm. it still exists. And yeah. even though the larger creators, I've watched larger creators say, hey, block him, don't let him in anywhere. And he still exists. And to me, that's because he has this organic following of mm. people that like him, that like that community and don't care regardless versus someone like if if like Tom Foolery, for example, he went through all that drama. Yeah. Right. Recently, I feel yeah. like because he focuses on because he focuses on drama and things like that, that the community is more likely to turn Mm. on you because of the way you've built it you've built it as this like if you build yourself as a debate bro and someone beats you well they're just going to follow the person who beats you that's their new king that's interesting yeah i did well i think people forget too i came into this scene with an established audience i had already been a youtuber for like a decade i just wasn't doing yeah. it full time until recently but mm -hmm. i already had my audience i already had my shtick i've already been you know i've already gone through my trials and tribulations on the internet so mm -hmm. i think people forget like that burning the bridge with destiny, in my opinion, is still a miscommunication, but like also whatever it is what it is. I never thought it would end my career because I'm like, OK, like per personally, my core audience always hated when I collabed with him anyways. Because they're girls and they don't like the debate bros because they're negative. Oh, do you have more of a 70 percent okay, women, baby? Funny? Let's go, girls. You know what's funny? I have a predominantly women's audience on TikTok too. Nice. Out of like the twenty-four, out of the twenty-four thousand, it's seventy-five percent women, and then out of the twenty-five percent of the guys, I'm assuming it's at least half of the gays. Like yeah, it yeah. can't be. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. No, I'm really proud of my audience, and I love the straight men in my audience. They know I do, but it's really yeah. nice because you do have to be a certain kind of straight dude to even tolerate my content. Let's be real. Like you have to yeah. be very secure. Okay, you have to be very yeah. non-threatened. Okay, and so I appreciate that. But yeah, I never. Th thought about it that way and now i'm recontextualizing people in my head because i mm -hmm. i see myself as somebody who makes content like you want to know somebody that i go so hard on and they just take it so well and i'm so impressed and that's kidology shout out to zeke you know who kidology is yeah i don't feel like you go i go so i feel like i go so hard on z and she just like takes it she's the toughest person i've ever met on the internet she might I watched the last video you did. Yeah. Okay. That was, that I'm usually very critical of Z. Kid. Okay. I'm very oh, pro okay. kid in that one, but I'm usually very yeah. critical about kidology. And she oh, okay. is the toughest human I've ever, like the way I go in on this woman and she's just like, thank you for your input. And I'm like, damn, she and I, I hope I know her forever. Like, she's so funny. And I realized like, oh. okay, like she, cause kid is really trying to find herself. Kid is on a journey mm -hmm. and I'm here for yeah. it. I think a lot of people don't understand uh, what I'm doing here in the space. So they think I'm doing the same thing they're doing, like you said, but mm -hmm. I'm not chasing views. I'm ch First of all, I'm chasing money more than views. So I don't care yeah. about my subscribers. I care about my paycheck. Yeah. Okay. And second of all, I'm not seeking fame. I'm seeking stability in a career. Mm -hmm. I want this career for a really long time. So if I made 70K for the rest of my life, I'd be very happy. If I made 100K yep. for the rest of my life, I'd be very happy. If I made 50K for the rest of my life, I'd be very happy. Because ultimately, like, just doing any job full time that you love is the mm -hmm. goal. Pay your bills, yeah. bitch. I don't know what you're out here for, but I'm not trying to buy a Lambo. Yeah. I'm trying to pay my health insurance bills. Like, everybody relax. So I think that's probably the difference. And I don't think I'm here for a little time. Sometimes I'll watch, like, Graham Stephan, and he'll say, oh, I'm almost done with my YouTube career. You know, it only lasts seven years. I'm like, why? Why does your career only last seven years? Like, I'm not here to last seven years. Yeah. I'm playing a long game. And I think the long game is here. The internet's here. If I have to adapt, if I have to switch platforms, I'm doing it, girl. But I'm here to, like, I'm here to be on the internet. And there's no way, like, unless the internet shuts down, that there's not going to be work on the internet. So it's just like a matter of like, I guess what we're all doing here. And I do think um, that people do forget people aren't always here for the same reasons. And I forget it too. I forget people aren't here for the same reasons. Yeah. Well, the careers only last for so long because like I said, if everything you're doing is trending, yeah, you're going to burn out eventually. Like there's going to be a, the new the new top person. So like even with this whole like the manosphere mm -hmm. right now, it's popular for right now. But eventually when these like little 14 year olds become 17, 18 and they realize like, oh, I can't just mm -hmm. actually operate the way I've been listening to the past. Like like there that, that eventually dies out. It's big. It's big right now. But for like, I, I understand why it's big, though. Yeah, I completely understand why it's big. The whole like when I said earlier, like boys want to feel cool. Well, who are the cool guys? One hundred, right? The cool guys are gonna be the Lambo dudes. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be the girls, the guys with the yachts and the and the this and the that and that and the other. And then, which is why I think like <clears throat> for like men, like male friendship dynamics, 
they're very very strange mm-hmm. i think they're very weird i think like once again you grow, you grow up at, maybe you don't admit it but you're looking for someone to look up to interesting like that that is what people are doing i think i think a lot of guys won't admit it because a lot of guys from like a young age are like no i'm i don't need nobody mm. I'm, I'm my own self i think that's like uh i think maybe they feel like it's gay to have like a mentor which right? is like, so weird though man's... but like mentorship and everything is so king arthur it's so like mm-hmm. traditional but maybe they don't know those traditions maybe they don't know that having a mentor is very like common in a lot of cultures well i think it is super common, but it used to be more common. Yeah, I think sure. nowadays there aren't mentors. I think people are just going to I work agree. and they have kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, especially if like you're in the idea of like patriarch, I have to make money, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're barely home. Yeah. So I think a lot of boys are like, even if they have like great relationships with their parents, they don't have this mentor thing that they're, this person yeah, that agree. they're looking for. I, th- I actually think like, uh, so uh, I'm the older brother. For my kids, if I, you know, if we, I could play, I think the older sister Mm. is way more important to a young brother than an older brother is important to a young sister. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think women socialize, like they, uh, especially like if they see, uh, if they have a younger brother, mm-hmm. they teach them to socialize better. Yeah. They teach them like, they teach them more important things because of the way they understand the world and they, the way they, they create the man they want to see out of their brothers. Mm. Or at least they attempt to. Mm. They're like, hey, I like I see these people doing this thing. I know that this is like what you want to aspire to. They, but they're telling you this is for girls, and I'm a girl, and I'm like no. And so I think like growing up, you you like you'd like learn like okay, I can have a relationship with a girl that is it, it's different when they're older than you because when you're older than them, you're you're more protector, for you're sure. more like guardian. When the, they're your protector, they're your guard, they're your teacher. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a big thing. I think for a lot of guys. That's why Sneeko is in like the position that he's in. He when Sneeko's upcoming was very introspective. Mm. He the, the videos he was making was amazing. And Agreed. initially he was making fun of Tate. Mm-hmm. That was like the initial of it. And then he met him. And I think something realized where he maybe looked around. I think there's a problem with the liberal and the progressive bubble. Sure. That guy, like people aren't cool. They're not, they're not cool. Everyone's whiny. Mm. to an extent everything's way too introspective for a lot of people and i think a lot of guys are just like hey i just want to like flirt with a cute girl and like have a little bit of money and i think that's like what's so like appealing to them is like even if you don't believe that you're going to end up in a lambo Mm. if you don't believe you're going to end up getting all these there's this like tangible like okay if i follow this path i get what i want which is at the very least a house a wife and a car and with the progressive, it's all about like your emotions and treating people better and like how to how to better communicate. And I feel I feel like for a lot of guys, they're just like, I mean, that's fine and all, but what about like the the, the other things that like like what about the other uh, material thing that we do still need that we still exist in? And I have to achieve regardless because like mm. as I'll, I'll, I'll you know I'm I feel like I'm very in touch with my emotions. I feel like I'm very I'm well at communicating. I'm good at I'm great at talking to girls, so on and so forth. At the end of the day, if you're broke, you being a great guy doesn't you you're almost a great guy. You're a great personality. And so for a lot of guys, I feel like they see this and they're like, okay, well, I've done the personality thing and people still don't like me because I can't do the I can't do that. I can't take a girl on a date. You're not I reliable in every aspect. Yeah, I mean, you're not reliable. You're not stable. You, so, like, you, I feel like a lot of guys are like, well, I work on all this emotional stuff and I can't even do it because no one wants to grow with me, right? The whole, like, no mm. one wants to grow. Everyone, the girls only want a finished house. They want to move in. Mm-hmm. They don't want to help build type situation. I think that stems from, like, two things. One is, like, that is true that every boy feels like, every straight guy feels this, like, weird innate pressure to, like, be this provider. I have to make money. I have to take girls out. This is this is my value. And then the other half of it is I think guys, I think girls have this ability to become friends with men. I think I don't think guys have an that easy of an ability to become friends with girls. I think there's a huge thing where a guy is attracted to a girl, so he lo- like that's the only, that's the only reason for approach. I feel mm-hmm. like most guys don't really approach many people to befriend people in general. They grow up with someone, they meet their friends, that's their click. And I think because of that, what happens is you see a girl you're attracted to physically and you want this person now. I think if 
they just want to be your friend. I don't think it's easy for the guy to get over that attraction. I think they're always trying. They're always chasing this thing because like something I've okay. Okay. If I'm a guy and I have, there's a girl in front of me and I think she's pretty and we get along and we're great friends. Why wouldn't I want to date the per this person? Why wouldn't I? They're, they're, I? I find them attractive. We get along. Why wouldn't I want to date this person? For girls, they see it. They're like, oh, well, you just want to sleep with me, which is very, it's, it's true. I, un I completely understand that. But it's just like, I don't know where a guy can get over that. I don't know what, how girls do, if you want me to be honest. <clears throat> I don't know where women get over that. Maybe they never had that attraction to begin with. Well, then even if, they, if, they, if a guy realizes that the girl isn't attracted to you, well, now you're just thinking, why? And so you're like, well, she's attracted to these guys. I'll do that thing, mm -hmm. which is like, uh, which is like the idea that you were saying with your friends, like, oh, you, you're, you have this banter with this and I want to have that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think for like majority of guys, I don't know that they're talking to people they're on, uh, they're not attracted to. So there, I, I, I've heard someone mentioned this study once I've never been able to find it, but it sounds true that women uh, if they're annoyed by something, they just don't see it. And men, or uh, uh, if women, d women don't realize or they don't recognize unattract whatever they're unattracted to, they just don't see what they're unattracted to. And men supposedly get annoyed when they see something they're unattractive. Which I like. I, 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 I get. Like I've never found the study, but I get it. It makes sense. But then, yeah, that I just kind of wonder, like, for men that, because that was that's probably like one of my biggest things is like. I was lucky enough to grow up with a lot of female cousins. Mm. So I got to associate with a lot of women growing up. There's, we are a very uh, female dominant family. We're a gynocentric family. So very like few guys. Mm. And so all, even with the guys that I grew up with, we all understood that like we're around these girls. And we have to act semi differently. I've built, I've learned to build friendship relationships because I had, I had growing up my girl cousins and then we were friends. For sure. And so I learned, okay, so I'm not attracted to this person. That means I cannot be attracted. I don't have to be attracted to every girl I see. Or also, if I find a girl attractive, that isn't the end all be all of like. There's a there's a there ever, like there's a lot of people I will find attractive. Mm. Which is something I uh, something like in like a side note in my relationship, I used to feel guilty finding other people attractive. Sure. What do you you're mean like, by well, attractive? Uh, I like your face. I want to approach. There's this weird urge of like. I like this person's face. Normally, you would approach if you were like if you were single, which I think is that like like weird guilt of finding someone attractive. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But yeah, okay. I like your face. Hold on, you've said a lot. Hold on. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so I would say no, no, you're great, but like I feel like you're describing a very specific type of person that isn't male but is a man. Okay. Meaning, because I think like men who are focused on being men struggle the most. Versus men who just happen to be male. Mm -hmm. And I think that manness is because the expectation of what a man is comes with a lot of baggage that they have to like deconstruct. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of that is like what is attraction and attractive? Because again, finding somebody attractive to me has nothing to do with my interest in wanting to talk to them. I find lots of people attractive I never want to talk to in my whole life. Yeah. And like because I don't like very many people. Like I like humans but I don't like people. Mm -hmm. And – I think my interest in people comes off like me liking them, but I just think like they're interesting kind of like as an observation. Yeah. So I think that there's like this dilemma that happens where there's like obviously levels of introspection at play here that aren't happening. But also like I always say this two great people who look great on the resume together might not be partners because like that's a real person that I believe in a soul. I believe mm -hmm. in an individuality. You don't have to call it a soul if that's too woo woo, but like an individuality that makes you, you and me, me. Even though we're all just like little, I believe in evolution. So like we're like little animals on a planet or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think like just because they're pretty and just because you like them doesn't mean that this is the person you're going to yeah. connect with. One of the many mm -hmm. that you might connect with. I think a lot of guys who think like I have a good job and I'm pretty good looking and I'm average. But like I can give you this thing. Why isn't it good enough? Are forgetting like, do you know you're a unique person with thoughts and feelings and you're asking another unique person to like do life yeah. with you and you're not considering that uniqueness. You're just thinking, why don't these girls like me? And it's like, well, you're asking not why don't these girls, you're asking why doesn't this girl and why doesn't this girl and why doesn't this girl? And it's not like, I mean, I've been, I've lived with people 
that I was like, are we going to get married? And I'm like, oh, no, we're not going to get married. It's like, it's not the sex or the financial sharing or making a kid that makes you have a compatibility with a partner. It's so Mm -hmm. much more. And so I think we, I think most of the world has always settled. I think most of the world settles in their relationships and settling to me is not good. It means you've, you've settled with somebody that's good enough, but you always wished it was better. That is not an attitude you want to have in a marriage. I feel like you want to be in a marriage or in a partnership that feels like this is the human being that I want to do life with or human beings Mm -hmm. if you're polyamorous, but like these are the humans that I, I'm excited to do life with every day. Like, I don't want you to wake up in your marriage and be like, ugh, my husband's Mm -hmm. home. And I'm like, oh my God, don't do this to yourself. Now I understand. That would be miserable. Right. And I understand it's a very privileged position to even have a love marriage and to say that I'm going to choose my partner. And I, I acknowledge all of this, right? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things my partner and I had done prior to meeting one another is we had both gone through our own introspective journey where we had come to the conclusion of like, you know, my life's great. And if I find a partner, great, but like, it doesn't need a partner to be great. And so by the time we met, it felt like, oh my God, like we came across each other and there could have been millions of other people we could have come across, but we were the first of those very unique high compatibility partners we met. Mm -hmm. I have never met a high compatibility partner. I've always been like 60% compatible, 70%. I've never been so compatible with somebody where it feels Mm -hmm. like, oh, I feel like I'm living with myself. Even though we're both unique, we're different personalities. We have our own preferences in terms of values, in terms of morals, in terms of like agreeing on what to do next. Like when we sit down and talk about money and we look at our budget, because we're very budgety people, we're, you know, (laughs) Dave Ramsey, thank you. We're like budgeting, (laughs) you know, we are on the same page. We're like vibing with the budget. Even something like that is so key to a marriage. When we're talking about sex and intimacy and kids and finances being the often contributing factor to divorce. And then when you have these couples you see on like a Caleb Hammer, like his show, and these couples are like, I didn't know you were spending money that way. And I didn't know you were doing this. And I, I didn't even know we didn't have any money. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, how are you no. living with somebody? You don't even know how they're doing things. And with I understand. Secrets, secrets lying. Yeah. Like, people are like, mm-hmm. Brittany, everyone lies to their partners. I was like, no, no, no. You. No. You lie to your partners. Th- and I was th- three like. Rules, three rules for me was you don't lie. You don't cheat. You don't embarrass your partner. If, if, if you, I love if that. If you avoid these three things. I love that. Most other things are pretty, like, solvable. Those three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a rocky path. I agree with that. I like that, actually. And that's something that. I think it's really hard to conceptualize um, because, again, I don't think we're taught to. I like. I remember in my 20s talking about my partners to my friends. Mm. And I think it was because I knew I was in toxic relationships and I needed somebody to give mm-hmm. me permission to leave. But now that I'm in a healthy relationship, I'm like, there's nothing you need to know. Everything's great. They're like, oh, my God. Because there's nothing, there's nothing bad happening. So there's only nothing, good. Yeah. And it, Nothing kills me more than the couples that are sharing everything online. Oh, girl. And it's like. It's like, um, it's this thing. So like when you go, like you said, you were looking for someone to validate you, for you to get out. Yes. So let's just say like you're ma- you're married to this person. You love your partner. If you go and you complain Ugh. to your friends about like two or three things, they're going to think that that person has a habit. Yep. And now you just outed them. You're painting this picture in your friend's head of like your partner that they don't even get to defend or justify because right. it's such a personal, like private True. conversation. And so like which is to me the embarrassing part like you're embarrassing your partner to your friends yeah well why if you have a problem and it's that big that you have to go tell everyone about it girl you need to think about that Mm -hmm. like the fact that you need to tell everyone about this because why do you need everyone to know your partner's faults like why yes instead of like so in my head i always tell my audience like if you've got a problem in your marriage talk to someone you trust to understand how private and sensitive this is. Usually, Mm -hmm. like, if you're religious, you can go to a priest or somebody who's religious, like a leader. You could go to, like, Mm -hmm. maybe a very trusted parent. You go to somebody who is not going to use this as, like, because, again, partners aren't perfect. Things might happen in a marriage. But go to someone, a therapist, somebody who's neutral. Like, the idea is, like, that's what I learned. I learned that's very significantly, like, the way you talk about your partner tells me everything. And I'm paying attention. And I know like sometimes I will have people in my life who every time they talk to me, they're complaining about their partner. And then they'll be like, why do you think I have a bad relationship? I'm like, I, all you do oh, is you complain. complain. All you do is complain. And every time you tell me about them, it sounds horrible. And they're like, mm-hmm. what? I'm in a great relationship. I was like, that's not what the data shows. Yeah. That's people, not the impression uh, you gave me. It's that, oh, we were doing so good this week. 
<laughs> we, we were supposed to have a good day today. Bro, that's the worst. Okay, and by the way, to tell on myself, that was my 20s. Oh, mm -hmm. we're okay this week. We haven't fought today. Mm -hmm. Do you hear yourself, was... girl? Get out. Yep. Get out. What are you doing to yourself? And I used to ask my ex-partners. I'd be like, do you think it's normal that we're yelling at each other? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, no, let me, let me rephrase. Do you think it's healthy that we're yelling at each other? And they're like, everyone does it. I was like, I don't think I want to be like everybody else. Yeah. I think I want to be different then. I think I want to be different because this is not no. the environment I grew up in. And then I realized like I was rebelling so hard against my parents. I forgot to take the good things with me, like the good parts of their marriage with me. And remember, like my mm -hmm. parents would never, my mom would never tolerate this. Why am I tolerating it? Or vice versa. Like my dad wouldn't, they don't yell at each other. They yell at the problem. They're very loud. We're all Middle Eastern. We're very loud. Yeah. It's not the yelling that's yeah. a problem. It's the fact that you're turning on your partner. You're pointing fingers. You're blaming your partner who's supposed to be your teammate, by the way. Yeah. Your teammate yeah. throughout life. So yeah, I think same thing, like where I think people don't hear themselves when they talk. Sometimes I'll have people say, like, why do you think so badly of me? I was like, bro, you just told me this, 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 this. And they're like, Yeah, but I thought you'd understand. I was like, I do understand. You got problems. That you're this. Yeah, you yeah. got problems. And they don't hear them. I swear to God, people don't hear themselves when they talk. Well, I, well, or, or they do, but it was like my thing. So I don't like trauma dumping because mm. I don't want validation. They are trauma dumping because yes. they want to be validated. For they sure. want that feeling. And, and it is like, so like to your point, like you're recognizing that their trauma dump is less about your friendship and more about the validation that you're giving them and yeah. that they're coming to you just so you can like make them feel okay. That's not a friendship. Mm. That's not even like, I'm not even a shoulder to cry on. I'm just mm -hmm. here to like reinforce all your bad behavior. That no, makes no sense. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. doesn't I make tell, any sense. You know what I tell my siblings and my friends if they call me, they're like, hey, I need to vent. I'm like, wait, are you venting for me to find the problem and give you a solution? Or are you venting for me to just be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I need you to uh-huh me. But also if you really see a red flag, call me out. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Go. Yeah. Go. We've, we, we've, I'll do that with I'll do that with my like my girlfriend when she calls she'll be like hey and I'll be like hey is this like a problem you want me to like give mm -hmm. you a solution for or you just want to be heard right now and then she's like oh my god I, like because I I like learned that a few years ago I heard yeah. that I was like oh, that, that's probably a good trick and I, and she's like oh my god I appreciate that so much no I just want like to just bitch and you just do you have the same thing I have where I first of all my dad always says he raised me as a boy and I definitely identify as a boy but like growing up when people gave me problems I was like I will fix this. Go ahead. Tell me what the solution. And then I realized like, oh, you need me just to listen without making. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Talk. I love telling people what to do, <laughs> which is another reason I don't like going to people because I'm like, yo, eh, like I already know what to do in my head. I'm just like, I don't oh. need, like the advice that you're going to give yeah. me isn't going to be fun. Like you haven't thought about it as much as I have. Oh I solve God. your problems. You can't solve mine. It's okay. Bro, I did that with a, co a collab one time where I just called somebody for content. See, when I try to content farm, I'm like, I already come up, came up with a solution, but let's pretend I didn't. What would you do? And like, that's the content. But the problem is like, I don't really need your advice, dude. I just want to like, I'm making content. But then I realized I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to make content. Yeah. I already know what to do. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> making content just to make content feels very like meh. Bro, but there's a whole industry for it, huh? Like there's a whole, mm -hmm. which is fine. Like, praise be. Look, we all do different things on the internet. I don't know how people do it. Because one of my big things <laughs> with watching, because we were talking about uh, when we were doing the movie discussion. Mm. I hate knowing that someone is acting. Ugh. So I hate knowing that someone is making content. I'm yes. Like, you just said this for the, like, it's just like, eh, it's not worth the farm. Okay. I, but that's why streaming is so deceptive because streaming gives the illusion of organic. Yep. But do you know how many times streamers call me? They'll like, get on stream, talk shit with this person. They're talking shit about you. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I did participate a couple times. I'm like, oh, this is like kind of fake though. It's like fake wrestling. Yeah. Look, wrestling yeah. is real, but the wrestling is fake, but the injuries are real. That's yeah. what streaming feels like. It feels mm -hmm. like, hey, guys, this is fake, but I'm really getting hurt here. Like, we're stray bullets are catching some people. We need to. I'm really getting hurt. People are in my comment section saying crazy, ridiculous crazy things. Shit. It's, it's like they're messing with my community of people yes. who just yes. who aren't trying to defend themselves today. Do you know that was you know? the thing that set, that made me really change uh, direction was my audience was starting to feel like they couldn't participate in comment sections. Because yeah. people would come in and they would like say horrible things. So I heavily block my comment section. So just yeah. FYI, because as mm -hmm. much as I'd love the engagement and it would push my videos further, I also want my community to have a space to like. Be themselves. Yeah, yeah. because like if they leave a comment and they're really sharing somebody and someone's like, oh, you're stupid. I'm like, hey, hey, 
like, I don't want this energy in my comments, which it does. It is a sacrifice of the YouTuber. If I just like comments roll, YouTube loves engagement, but I, mm -hmm. I feel bad. I feel bad. You know, I just want my community to feel like we're really having a discussion here. And plus I'm the only one who does exactly what I do. Like exactly what I do. I think everyone does a little bit of every, I do a little bit of what everyone does, but I do something very specific and mm -hmm. I know it because everyone always says, Brittany, you're the oddball out. Okay. Then shut, let me alone. Let me do my weird thing. Let me do my weird thing in my weird corner, which is like my whole career, right? At least it like, I don't know, it's working. So like, fuck off. I feel like that's what the the, the best part of the internet actually is, is the, these little corners, these little nooks yeah. of like, I found this person, I agree with this person, I like listening to them and it's like, yeah. okay, cool. It's, because people like, I obviously love my drama content. It's fucking <laughs> great to watch. You know, it's yeah. amazing to watch internet drama. Do I want to necessarily participate in it? No. <laughs> Um, but I love participating in like yeah. the debate stuff, the yeah. debate stuff, like the panels are super fun. I listen to for them. Me. Yeah. I don't like They're participating, but I listen. I yeah. love, I love arguing. I'm, I'm an Arab man. So I yeah, yeah, love yeah, yeah. just arguing and sharing my opinion and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So it becomes, and honestly, like, uh, with the internet, because I love watching it so much, I've always had these like, well, you, why don't you just say this? You, if you would have totally. just said that. Totally. And so like getting able to do it is like super fun. But then also, I'm not going to lie, getting checked. Mm. That is a great fucking time. You being so confident about something and then someone just being, well, here's the actual facts of it. You're just wrong. And you're just like, oh, shit. Like, it's humbling. Okay, it's wait. humbling. And it, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your thought. Finish no, your thought. No, it's, it's just good. I was going to say it's humbling. It's good. It's, it's, it's a, a growth. Okay, I'm curious about this because the reason I started doing my own panels was no, no, I watch everyone else's panels. Like I watch Wick and I watch everybody else and I love watching the panels. I noticed I yeah. felt a little awkward participating because I felt like, again, I was ruining it for people. I just felt like I was showing up and being like bubbles. And then everyone's like, oh, and I was like, I don't want to yeah. be this girl. But I started yeah. doing my own panels with the girls and the girls and I, we love doing, it's just like the greatest time of the month for me. But what did you think about being on that panel? Did it feel different at all? Or did it just feel like a vibe? I'm trying to make sure people have a space to like have kind of like different way, like different discussions. I know you and Smith had a powerful moment, but like mm -hmm. in general, I'm really trying to like have like a specific way to do the panels there. But like, did you sense any, did you have a good time? It felt like you had a good time. Yeah. Being, okay. So being on panels with like a bunch of guys and there's like topics to debate, we just get into rant. It, it ends up diverging into a million different things. Yeah. I felt like it was more like everyone came in knowing what they wanted to talk about and they stayed on topic. Um, and maybe it was like, I think there's maybe a difference between like male, a male, a uh, male panel and a female panel. Whereas like maybe women are going to be a little bit nicer. They're going to let you mm. finish your point before they try to enter, like, you know, try to like repeat what you're saying or, uh, rebut to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're listening. I feel like a lot of the time they're listening. They're not trying to one up. Right. I didn't feel like anyone was trying to win because it wasn't a debate. Right. It was a discussion panel about mm -hmm. this. But then, like the, the what ended up what, if you, what ended up happening was get, yeah I got I ended up debating with Smith and then I even ended up debating with a couple of girls I think I'd like just I don't know if it's guys I'm gonna, this is just me I love just like a little bit of a not an Spice. argument but like, yeah, like, like, a, like a back and forth a banter it's good sure but I also instantly felt bad when I accused uh, um, Harmony or Mina. yeah mm -hmm. and I was like oh my god I guess I because I because I, I was like she's not giving this energy yeah. And I felt like I hurt this person or I disrespected this person who isn't doing that. They're not. So I like, I was like, Oh, I did. I didn't match energy there. I went yeah. above. And so that was like, maybe the difference is that like, I felt like it was more discussion based. People were like mm -hmm. listening and trying to rebut. And then it was this weird urge of like, well, wait, what about well, this? Yeah. Weird, no, you yeah gotta, it you is different. It is different. Yeah, like even, um, before I came to Europe, we had like a, for my birthday, like a get together with the siblings and my brother hadn't seen me in a bit and he's used to me debating everybody. And I had changed tactics and I was like not interested in debating anybody. I was open to discussion. He asked me a question and I was like, I'm happy to have this discussion with you, but I'm not going to debate you. And he's like, but you love debate. I was like, no, I'm retired from debate. I only discuss mm -hmm. now. And he was like, why? And I was like, because it's going to turn into insults yeah. and I don't want to do that. And he was just like, liberals are such pussies. I was like, no, see, you mm -hmm. did it. Like, I was like, no, I want to have a conversation. He tried to engage in a debate. And he's just like, and he tried so hard and he was like poking me and I was like, 
I'm exhausted. Now I'm tired. And I was like, look, I've debated my whole life. Okay. I've been debating since I was nine fucking years old. Okay. Yeah. Like my bestie and I, that I told you about that I've known for over 20, we're political people. We, she like minored in poli sci. Like we love a debate. Mm -hmm. We're exhausted. We just want to have a discussion, yeah. trade secrets, understand how to be better at life, you know? And so I think there is like a flavor to the internet where I can't fall. I love listening to it. I do watch the panels. I just don't want to participate in it because I think it goes back to this conversation that even Hassan was trying to have. Like, do people learn from debate panels? Well, what are you learning? Like, what's your- what, To form their own opinion. Yeah. Are you learning to win or are you learning to yeah. know better? Like how to dissect ideas? Like, is the person who wins the person who's better at debate? Like, is that truth though? And so it's like, I want a, I want a discussion panel where the audience feels like, oh, oh, like I'm taking notes. Like, I really mm -hmm. want to think about this. I want to change my mind maybe or add a tool into my arsenal that I didn't have before. And I felt like that discussion we had with you, I was like, oh, this was good energy. Like, I really liked it. And I've really enjoyed the people I've been having on the panels. Like, I do. I love Smith. And I know Smith can get into it. But I still like his insight. It's different. It's like a different perspective. Yeah. And I think I've appreciated how people have come to my panels. But I also understand that ultimately, like, there is a reason there's a debate space. There is a reason it thrives on the internet. And there's a reason yeah. why it's also connected to a lot of drama. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how it is with like uh, with TikTok lives. I noticed with like with the live battles, which is literally just you looking at your screen, begging people for money, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. literally they're making a lot of money. I will mm -hmm. I'll give them that. I could never bring myself to be a beggar online, but th they're making uh, they're making thousands a day. Yo, guys, I'm switching to TikTok. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, if, if, if you actually just want to like you're going to. So what it is, is like uh, you go live. Someone else joins your life. Yeah, I've seen your life, and um, you're you're looking at your screen, your community, and they're sending you gifts and stickers. That's crazy. And they crazy. appear on the screen, and there's a point system, and so you're competing with the the other team of who can get the most points or stickers yeah. or the types of stickers. Sure. Some of these stickers are four hundred fifty dollars, five hundred, six hundred dollars that that people are spending to send you that you're just receiving. One of the dramas that's happened in my little community is there's this kid. Uh, his name is Haas. He honestly makes like four to eight thousand dollars a day, depending. He had his community, right? So they were doing a live battle. One of the girls that's a, uh, a regular gifter said, Hey, if you guys unlock this ability, which is four hundred dollars, you, you the community spends four hundred dollars. If you unlock this ability, I'll send this one gift that's six hundred dollars. They unlock it, she didn't send the gift. And then all of a sudden there's a whole controversy. He's like, you scammed my people. You oh. did. Th I'm like, I'm like, buddy, no one scammed your people. You're scamming your people. This is all literal, just internet begging. That's crazy. Very, I have yeah, seen those. I never understood yeah. how it worked really. Mm -hmm. oh, that's well, these are the people with the hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. Cause for some reason people love engaging in like, they're like, oh, my team won. Back to what I was saying team sports, bro. with like, with, with like the streamer thing, right? You have a couple hundred people in this chat giving this one individual a couple thousand dollars a day for battles, but why? They're like, well, I spend eight hours a day with this person. Mm. I'm entertained by this person. This person talks, because like in my lives, they get really personal. Mm. There was one live where I did with like, uh, where it was just chilling. And we did, I, I did like a, uh, there's this one girl came in. She was like dealing with like anxiety and a bunch of bullshit. She was like considering getting on drugs. I was like, hey, we did like, like two hours of like, talking about breathing exercises and like different, like my experience with drugs, like how, like how it like, it's a nice bandaid. And like <clears throat> over the, like uh, over the course of a month, she had come back in the live and told me like, she actually did the breathing exercises and mm. stuff like that. This, the, that community that I built is smaller. Mm. The other one is larger. The other one, they add into the parasociality. They, mm -hmm. they tell these people, I love you. We are friends. You're an amazing person. I love having, you're my moderator. I love having you in my chat. Where would I be without you? Mm. Let's, let's win team. Let's win. Yeah. And so these people do feel like, okay, well, I have this friend group in this group chat that I spend four hours a day with. Yeah. 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 If you have a streamer that you really love and you're like in their chat and you have friends within like your sure, discord or whatever, you're going to feel this. I mean, a lot of people don't have personal friendships in like life right now. People are very lonely. They're all online, especially look, like the younger kids. I will say this. Look, I, I've even had to moderate my communities differently. And I love when my communities make friends and I'll become like, I mean, I've, people have fallen in love in my discord, which I love to see. I felt, you know, Amazing. I get it. I love that. But like the dilemma 
is that even I had to put down like boundaries with my discord and stuff. Cause I realized mm -hmm. like, Oh, people are starting to feel like way too close. And I have a tendency to be very warm and welcoming. And I do make, I, I think I do have a habit of yeah. making people feel very seen, which is like <laughs> great, but also it miscommunicates some stuff. So I had to put down, like, I only show up for events. I don't sit in VC as much. Like I'm very like specifically like available. I'm available for, mm -hmm. you know, and I think the community is better for it. And the community has grown, you know, because of it. And I love that, but also it, it, I don't want to hurt people's feelings ultimately. Like I just want it to be clear, but I think it's always the struggle. Like Hassan even said, he's very like stream focused, like chat focused. And even as a streamer, I always told myself I wouldn't call chat chat. But the reason you want to call chat chat is also to like break that parasociality. Because if you start like making people feel too seen, they will start to feel almost guilty for even not watching your streams. I've had people and guys, this is just a shout out to you. You don't have to message me to say like you're leaving the community. Like you're allowed yep. to leave. I'm just a streamer. Like you don't have to tell me like, I'd love to see mm -hmm. you grow and leave. But sometimes people will message me like, Hey girl, I'm so sorry. I have to like leave the community. I'm like, girl, it's not a church. You don't got to tell me like, you just, no, I'm just a random. Yourself. You don't have to explain yourself. And I think I don't ever want them to feel like I owe Brittany an explanation. Like you don't owe me anything. I'm a stranger. You're a stranger. Thank you for supporting the content. Go like I do that. I don't, I watch streamers some days, like every day. And then sometimes I go, oh, I want somebody else today. Boom. I'm in a new community. You don't, you don't have to tell people, but I think like people just like, they're such good people that they feel like, oh, I, that's a real person. And I love that. But also you can treat me a little bit less like a person to remember that I'm at work. Yeah. You Dude, know, um, <laughs> I think this is like, so this whole idea of, okay, so you're nice to people. Mm. They think you're their friend. For sure. Same thing with dating, right? With a lot of girls will be like, well, I'm nice to these guys and they think I'm flirting with them. Mm -hmm. Right? What is it about, like, do you think every individual like that, that streams has to go out of their way to, to say, hey, we are not friends. You just see my face. Or is it like, sh like shouldn't that just be an expect? Like, shouldn't that, like, Mm. shouldn't it be expected that people can be nice to you and then they're not <clears throat> you're not in a relationship with the person just because they were kind <clears throat> shouldn't that be the norm the norm should be the lack of expectation because the norm mm. right now is oh someone's nice to me they might want a friendship or a relationship or sex yeah one yeah, or the yeah. other no one's nice for no reason i went and said hi she uh, like the waitress you know the waitress was extra kind the for blah, blah. sure so it's like oh you want to hear a study about this there was yeah. a study they did on grocery store workers because Kroger was having an issue where their policy, and I used to work for Kroger, is that you say mm -hmm. the person's last name on their card and you say, thank you for shopping with us, Mr. Smith. Female cashiers were being stalked and harassed, including yeah. a couple male cashiers, because the male customers thought they were engaging in intimacy barrier breakage yeah. where they're like, you're calling me by my name. You're interested mm -hmm. in me. You're telling me to have a good day. And they had to sue Kroger because this policy of trying to be a good employee turned into miscommunication with the clients or the customers. Mm. How crazy is that? So I think like the, the default should be good neighbors are good to each other. Yeah. And entitlement to things should never be the default. It should always be like, do you think we get, and look, I used to get hit on all the time, even though I worked in a hairnet and a hat. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this happened. It doesn't matter. Men used to come in and be like, Hey, thank you for giving me my Turkey sandwich. Like call me. And I'm like, Bro, like I look mad crazy right now, but like yeah. things, <laughs> you know, so I think, I think what it is, is like, um, the problem is like, I don't know what's happening in these individual people's lives, but it's probably an indication of something. But I do think the default should be kindness is just the default because we're good to each yeah. other. But that entitlement is just like, it don't think it, but also it's not wrong to shoot your shot. It's just like, be appropriate about it. Like none of the guys who shot their shot, shoot shot their shot to me was bad, but I will say like, it must've been really awkward when they came into the deli to get their food the next them? time. And I was like, sorry, like, that's so weird. But yeah, I, I think that I am shocked sort of at people's mis like communication skills and comprehension skills, not just like communication, but comprehension. Like, are you com comprehending what's happening here? Like, did you ever think like they said this, but they actually meant this? And that's yeah. why I'm I'm like, that's why I think I'm obsessed with like, oh, when you say this word, do you mean this? Oh, I like you. Okay. Are you saying I like you? Yeah. 
you've clarified a couple times like oh what do you mean by attraction what do you mean yeah like i want i want the clear like i want to make sure because it's so easy for me just to be like i'm gonna put my own assumption Mm -hmm. on what you mean by this or when people say like oh my god like you were friends and i was like oh what does that mean no because if i'm making friends with everybody like our deli lady feels like a friend when we walk in and she knows my order it feels like we're neighborhood friends yeah, you're a regular. We're, yeah, I'm a regular. Yeah. And she knows us. And she's like, oh, are you doing this again? And like, are you making beef jerky again? And like, she'll know how we like it cut. And she'll, you know, and that feels almost bad in some ways. Like, do you ever love going to a store and being a stranger? No, like, do you know I what I mean? Like anonymous. people knowing me. Oh, no, I prefer really? the people knowing me. Yeah, I feel, because mm. I feel like more at home. Fair, fair. I think it's a both for me where sometimes I just want to go to the store and not be known. But then it also feels nice to be a regular and people know I heard you. you talk, I heard you talk about that when you said you first moved over there and like yes. yeah, being like the stranger in the town. It's like, um, okay, so do you think that's, for me, I do enjoy that, mm. but only because of the attention I'm getting. Yes, that's okay, what it is. So like you, you like being the new thing, the new shiny thing in town. No, I don't want the that's attention. What I was, oh, no, but I do you want, want the attention. <laughs> If I go somewhere, okay, so something my family has noticed, I'm late to everything. Yeah. But I love the attention of like, why'd you come late? It's like, you that know I'm going to come late every so time. We're not funny. doing anything. No, no, no. I want. You know? I don't want the attention. I don't want to be oh. perceived. I don't want to be perceived. So when I go to the store, I just want to be invisible. Do you think you're invisible if you're a new person in a small town though? No, not with my hair. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. Is like you kind of you you, you no, made a stand. No, I like you know? I like being new, meaning like a stranger. But I also um, I want to be good to people, and mm-hmm. sometimes I'm feeling less or more social. And so sometimes, like, you ever like get stopped and then they talk to you for twenty minutes and you're like, I just yeah. want to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, I that's where the... I feel bad. Where I was like, I just want to come in and grab my cheese and go home. But then mm. like, when they start talking to you, you're like, oh well. Yeah, that's how it feels. It feels like a p- p- yeah, like a okay, part I understand. Of me. I'm a very limited people pleaser. I'm not a people pleaser in general, but there's a small part of me that goes, I cannot be rude to this person and I must entertain this conversation. But also, how do I cut it short and like <laughs> Yeah, and just, uh, without being rude. And it's like honestly, yes. most people don't even take it as rude. Most people, especially if they're working, they realize you have stuff to do. That's true, or too. They, like, you know, that's well, that's why I like just... Croatia so far in general, is most of them are pretty good at small talk being limited. Yeah. They're pretty good at it. Uh, how, how have you felt? So like I assume Croatia don't they don't speak English in, like not like, very much. Um, no. It's yeah, very okay, so hard. Then, so I know you're a little introverted and you have like your online your online job. So like that's kind of yes. covered. How how have you like felt uh, so are you like in are you indoors a lot do you go out do you speak to people like how has that like been for mm. you you've well, only been there for a handful of months right like six i've I don't, been I here wanna, for a little like, over a year now oh sorry i don't yeah i'm not trying to like no yeah. it's crazy though like it's crazy okay. that i've been here already for a little over a year yeah um i uh, i'm mostly inside my partner and i are inside people we go okay. outside to do our walks or it's like go to the beach or like we have our things we like to do together. And then we have the neighbors that we see, you know, we live in a neighborhood. You see the yeah. same people walking their dogs or whatever. So mm-hmm. we have like a neighborhood, like head nod thing we do with people, you know, it's like whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, Croatians kind of mind their business. Um, okay. He has his group of friends here. I've met them. They're very lovely. I'm slowly meeting new people that he knows. Like we ran into people at the store the other day and I was like, oh, like I get to meet more people in his friend group that I haven't met yet. But even they're all pretty, like, some of them are extroverted. A lot of them are introverted. So, like, mm-hmm. we make, like, like, we have, like, lunch dates we make up to go socialize. But we yeah. don't do it very often. And we like it that way. I will say that I'm not here to make friends. I already okay, have that's, friends. I was just about to ask. Yeah. yeah, I'm not here to make friends. I already have friends. They just don't live here. Okay. So I don't worry about it. I would like to learn a little bit of the language. I'd like to pass my immigration test. And I think you have to yeah. know just enough language. So I do, I am making an attempt to like want to integrate myself into the culture enough to pass the test and live here. But also I respect that I'm very old at this point in my life. I have my established friendships. I love my friends. I talk to them enough. The internet's here. I don't, I feel like I socialize so hard in my 20s. I feel like I'm retired in my 30s. I'm the millennial stereotype of like, I already did all my socializing. I have all my friends. So I'm open to new friends that make sense, especially for work. I love a new work friend. That's, you know, especially where we vibe. But I'm not looking for like um, 
a new best life friend. Friends. Yeah, no, I already have like enough of those. I'm open to negotiating. Okay. Like I, like I said, I have made some new connections and we are establishing like talking outside of stream and being like friends mm-hmm. in that way. But we also like, where, how many spoons do you have? What's your limitation is once a month too much to talk. And like, it often is too much, you know, okay. once a month or maybe every two months I can talk to a new person, but cause I talk for a like living personally, personally. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I already talk for a living. Okay. You don't okay, so I can get that that not lonely. Does it not feel a little strange to not have your own like um personal like IRL fr- like mm. friend or not? Because like you have your partner's friends, which I understand they're not. They're my friends. your friends, but like yeah, they're, they're not, not my friends. friends. They're really yeah. they're nice, but they're not my friends. <laughs> exactly, and so I know that like you're an in, like indoor person. Is there not any part of you that's like, oh, I'd like to go get dinner with like the girls or like a friend and just like go like have like share like Mm. what Croatia life is like or like just like the coffee date or like whatever it may be. Does that not feel like a little bit to me that would feel a little bit strange. I'd feel alienated. Sure, sure, sure. I think that I think I would have felt that in my 20s for sure, which is why Mm -hmm. I moved near my friends and like tried to socialize with people I knew in my Mm -hmm. 30s. Like, honestly, I live with my best friend and I want to do everything with him. And he wants to do everything with me, but also my friends can travel here. I've already had friends come and see me, which has been oh, really awesome. nice. That's good. So I think like we're just at that stage in our lives where like we can kind of just travel to see each other type thing. Mm-hmm. And then considering how introverted all my friends basically are, most of us only want to see each other so often anyways. And then we just call. Okay. So I think it works out. I don't think I have very many extroverted friends that like want to go out all the time. Um, but I think that if I lived – and also, like, keep in mind, like, I've never – I – even during COVID, as an example, I lived in a town with no friends. I didn't socialize. I never went out except with my siblings who then lived with me. Mm-hmm. So, like, if they're available, I'll use it. But if they're not available, I don't miss people. But I do – and I will say, now that I've been here over a year, I am missing being with my family. Okay. But – and I want to go see them. But I don't um, – like, it's not eating up at me. It's just like, oh, that would be nice. I, I want to see my sister again. But it's not like – I. it just feels like adulting. It just feels like, yeah, we don't live together. And also, I made the choice to not live in America. Yeah. So it kind of feels like I'm perfectly built to not live there. But also, if my husband dies from a car accident, I'm going to go live near my sister in California. We've already decided. That because, like, sense. that's hopefully who I want to – Hopefully doesn't come to that. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But we already, like, yeah. we talked about it. I was like, hey, if you die, I go back to California, yeah? And he's like, yeah, obviously. Like, why would you stay here? And I was like, okay, I'm just yeah. checking. Like, why would I stay here? Like, I would go home and I'd live near my sister because out of all my friends, like, she's the one that makes the most sense. She lives near my parents. We would be Mm -hmm. neighbors. It would be. So it's not like I wouldn't live near my community. Ultimately, I could never have moved here if I didn't have a person. Okay. I'm not that. I'm not adventurous like that. You don't want to be alone. Oh, my God. I do not. Okay. No. If I was single, I would live near my family, but in my own apartment. Okay. That's fair. Yes. I do not want to live in a city all by myself. Okay. No. No. I I just need one person. I just need one person. Okay, now, with, like, the introvert thing and you guys being so, like, one, like one-on-one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, does it ever worry you that, like, so I think uh, spoons is energy for mm-hmm. people, I'm mm-hmm. assuming, mm-hmm. right? So khilet is what we call it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, um, so do you ever worry that because you're so okay with being an individual and he has his friends, mm-hmm. right? So he has an outlet. Well, mm-hmm. you're saying you have an outlet because you text do you ever worry that it's like the spoons will run out because you're so focused on one on one? Mm, like Like will it not recharge my spoons just having one on one? Like I won't What do you mean? So like for I think a lot of people it's not that you complain about your your partner or whatever. But I think a lot of people need outlets, even from their best friend. You can't just oh. hang out with like one individual every day. Oh, I you get it. Need other people mm. to like be this other little energy like, exchange. It's, it's, like it's, it's not that they're not themselves when they're with you, but maybe like you said that I have different jokes with like, sure, sure, this sure, sure, person. Sure. Yeah. So do you ever feel like you're putting 
you, your spoons are left to focus on one individual IRL because mm, I think IRL is a different type it, of like it. energy and level. And that like maybe you don't have an outlet. And do you think like that is is that something you concern yourself with? Is that something you thought about in terms of like putting all this energy in? Yeah. Um, no, I don't. Well, at this stage in my life, I, um, my needs are really important and my mental health is really important. And I don't mm -hmm. find myself needing more people at this point. Like I, okay. I feel like if I did, I would just change my life. You know, like if I find myself, if I told my partner, okay. like, Hey, I'm actually starting to feel like I need to talk to somebody like physically that isn't just you, I mm -hmm. would just fix that. But I haven't okay. come across it yet. And I think that's probably because to be honest, it's probably because I'm in my hustle era. So basically, mm -hmm. I'm working a You're lot. Yeah. I'm so yeah. focused right now that mm -hmm. I even told my sister, like, don't come see me this summer. Okay. Because I'm working. And if you come see me, you're going to fuck up my flow. And I love you. So, mm -hmm. so see me next summer. And that's what the plans we made is, like, she'll come next summer. Because, like, I'm like this. And I'm doing something. And I'm, like, building a career. Remember how we going back to the very start of this conversation? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I got to tell my family, like, I'm choosing work right now. Yeah. Not at the expense of our relationship, but I got to prioritize work. So I choose my okay. job, but not like at the expense of my marriage. And I choose my marriage, but not at the expense of my job. Okay. It's about having that balance. So like I told my friends, I love you. And even look, I talked to my bestie about it today. If I go to Cali to see family, but they live in the Midwest, and my brother lives here and this person lives here. Which of my 20 people am I supposed to prioritize as a trip? And are you guys paying my flight bills? Oh. Because when I come to America, I'm not going to be able to see all my friends and family anyway. They all live in different places. I have to prioritize which family am I going to see. Which sucks, by the way. You know, like, that, is, that, that is like interesting because my dad's side of the family is all here in Michigan. So yeah. like, we're all here. But my mom mm. has one of her sisters here, one of her sisters in uh, Germany, a couple of siblings in mm. Lebanon. And then their kids are out in like Africa and, and Germany. Cool. So it is like it's it is almost like the same thing, but like what will happen is because Lebanon is an expensive trip. It's an expensive flight. You're not going for a weekend. You got to yes, go for at least exactly. a week or two weeks minimum, exactly. right? Like you're not doing this. So that's taking off work, flights, the hotel, and then spending money while you're there. It's a whole thing. So what they'll do is like be, they'll just like pick times of the year because they're closer to each other and like from Germany or whatever. They'll pick like one or two times of the year. They're like, all right, cool. This is like a family reunion day yes. that we're doing. And then yes. my mom will try to like fly out at the time but then when my mom goes she's there for like two months she's like exactly. i can't keep going back and forth but even my mom's considering going back to like lebanon right now yeah she's like hey like i love you guys love my kids but my siblings are like over there it. america is very fucking expensive and she's yeah. like this isn't i'm not even like enjoying like time i, I want to be able to enjoy time and there's this like weird she has this weird <sighs> guilt of like but you're my kids i won't be able to see you and then we're it's us trying to like Get yeah. her to be more like, hey, we know that we won't be able to see each other as much, but you need to focus on like where you are going to be most comfortable and happy. Yeah. And then with that, we will be able to like arrange things. You'll be able to come out once a year. We'll go out there. And even we once a year seems like such a privilege at this point. Like who, who mm -hmm. has enough money to spend 3K, you know, yeah. traveling and like that's a big deal in an income like. And so I think that's the per like, and then you lost that, like, if you're not working during that week, you're traveling and then it's like, what mm -hmm. are you doing? So it is a big deal. Like, I definitely yeah. think this has been the hardest and weirdest time. Even my parents are grandparents and they're like, should we move near the grandkids? And I was like, if you move there, you'll be miserable. Like, I don't like you would not be happy where the kid moved and like, it wouldn't make sense. They have this paid off home in California. It's beautiful. I'm like, why are you moving from a paid off mm -hmm. home in this economy? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, don't do this. But that's the thing is like, we just like. It, you make hard decisions as families and it's not what we thought it would be growing up. We thought we'd all live next to each other for sure, but that's not what we have. So this idea of moving to Croatia and not having friends here, it just doesn't impact me the same way I think it would have been at a different time in my life. And look in five years, I might feel differently, but then yeah, we just course, adjust, yeah. right? Like we just adjust, <laughs> yeah. but then even long-term talk about buying a house, at least here in Croatia, we have a chance of affording one. Yep. Yep. And I think that's another thing in relationships that are important to even like with friendships is like the expectation that like you can't expect someone to be the same person they were six years ago, five Hell years ago, no. two years ago, a month ago. I hope not. People God. grow and they change. Yeah. And so it's like having that in within like that dynamic within your relationship. Like, hey, like we don't know what's happening lifelong. We just know where we're at right now. Yes. Yes. I think that's uh, yeah. that's important. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Well, it's hard because like big family. Yeah, it's, it's it's I love. Look, I will never not be happy that my grandma had seventeen kids, my mom had ten kids, mm-hmm. and all my aunties yeah. and uncles got big family. And I'm never going to. But even my cousins, some of my favorite cousins, like I don't get to see them every year. Like yeah. we get to see each other when we can, and like that's a really big, amazing get together. Like that's the best time, right? Mm-hmm. But that's why you know you got to be grateful for the times you do have, but also be grateful that your friends can go and live their whole lives. And even if we don't see each other, it doesn't mean my friendships are at risk. And I think that's important. Yeah, we should be happy happy and celebrating. Yeah, because ultimately, look, like me and my partner, we've got to prioritize our relationship over everybody else's choices, but still incorporate people's choices into our life to the best of our ability. So like we think about his parents and I think like, hey, your parents are this old and they're going to be this old and we got to be like here and we got to. Like, we can't abandon your parents. Like, your parents can't be. And I know for a lot of people, they're willing to do that. And, like, again, sometimes you have to. We're lucky we have good relationships with our parents, so we get to maintain Mm -hmm. those relationships. But it does mean that we're thinking about them. And, look, maybe I wouldn't say it's a sacrifice, like a negative I would say that I'm lucky enough to have in-laws here to give me an excuse to live in Croatia, but also like it's a blessing to know that we have in-laws we get to know. I get to know like my mother-in-law and I were at a restaurant. We do a monthly dinner together, which by the way, we'd be doing with my parents if I could, but we do them with our in-laws and my in-laws and it's really, really great. And she sings. So she and I were singing in the restaurant, like Amer- like English music, and we were bonding and she was like crying. And she's like, you guys are so happy and I'm so happy and I'm so glad you're here. And it was a beautiful opportunity for us to like build this family. Yeah. Whether or not That's we amazing. have kids, like beautiful. I have family here. That's beautiful. You know, and he's got relatives here. I've already met aunts and uncles and like, I look forward to meeting more cousins, but like there is a whole ecosystem here that I get to be a part of now, which is what the dream is, right? Marrying into a family where you get more family. Yeah. You know, that's the dream. So I feel like pretending I don't have it is, I don't look at it that way. If I, if I really need to socialize and call my (laughs) mother-in-law, you know? Okay. Yeah. I feel pretty, pretty content. Yeah. No, I'm so happy for you. That's honestly amazing. Yeah. I feel really lucky. I feel stupidly luck i feel like the stars aligned a bit yeah we feel pretty lucky. i feel like the stars aligned, but also like i also you got to give yourself some credit you put the work into for be sure able to reach the place where you want to reach so the stars may have aligned but you you know kept your feet moving well, so that's also good what's idea. that saying like a preparedness plus opportunity or something is luck yeah. or whatever that sentence that's me that's, plus luck equals opp- yeah that one i feel like i made the effort and then like yeah I, we always talk about if we had met five years earlier we wouldn't have been compatible if we met at different times in our lives, like we would have been in completely different places. I wouldn't have been yeah. healthy enough. He wouldn't have been healthy and it would have made sense for our lives. But now that we're both yeah. in really good places and we met up, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Or, but like, what about you and your your partner, right? Like you guys have to, I assume, eventually build like this own little thing you're doing, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. since I assume, is she close to her family? Not particularly. She has like her friends and her a uh, couple of her uh, family that she is close with I've met and they're like amazing people. Um, yeah, it's, it's one, like she never thought about like leaving where she was at. Mm. So it's, um, we decided to date and then because we've known each other for so long and because like we're both like at the ages we're at, it was more kind of like, yo, like, I'm not trying to date for years. I kind of want to like, you know, we'll make this decision. Let's actively like move towards like marriage and like start our lives. And so in that it's like um so i I have to leave michigan for like uh x amount of time because she has like she wants to sell her house Mm. she has a good job that like we have to like consider like that's a lot okay can you find a better job over here can you find something equivalent like Mm -hmm. what's like what 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 are you willing to give up in terms of that what am i willing to give up what like ultimately like ultimately we decided to like live in michigan my family is like i have a large family i'm pretty interconnected to my family she like appreciates and likes that love it so it's like we've decided but we've also like been talking about like hey if shit does hit the fan uh do you want to stay here or what do do you want to do and so we have been having like kind of like different discussions and i am coming to like terms with like kind of in that same way well i'm not sacrificing my family but i'm just moving for like if if i do move if whatever i decide i have to make decisions for like me and my partner well our life looks yes. like and like yes. what our family like will continue to mm-hmm. look like mm-hmm. and if anyone is like hurt by that well i can't help you there like yeah. i can only i can't i can't control your feelings on yeah. like what i want to do with my life so it's it is 
I think it's easier to think about that because I have like, it's like a partner. Yes. And we have these like types of conversations about like one-on-one -on -one. Mm. and like, hey, well, like, well, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? All right, how do we do this together versus I'm doing things individually? She's doing things individually. For it sure. wouldn't make sense for me to just leave for no reason. Like, you know, you were saying. Yeah. So it is like, it is amazing, but I think it's, has a lot to do with the fact so you met your partner at a certain point in time and you said if you had met previous the relationship wouldn't work for us it was lucky enough to like we met we formed this like relationship where i did change from the person i was like three years ago mm -hmm. we are different people for sure and and that's that was part of the discussion she's like well why didn't we date before i was like well i'm not gonna lie i don't think you we would have been a good relationship mm -hmm. three years ago we were good friends I was there for you as a friend. I wasn't there for you as like in like a boyfriend way. And you were there for me in different ways. We wouldn't have been compatible in like a dating relationship. But we were meant to be friends at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so and in growing Valid, and seeing yeah. this past three years, I've learned to accept like differences about how so we've had uh, discussions. We formed a really good friendship, her being so far away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It was we actually got to focus on like just ideas and ideology and like well, what do you think what do i think do, am i wrong here am i wrong here am i right here all these things and we got to form this relationship to where it's like now the place i'm in is like well i am ready for like a relationship and i and not gonna lie thinking about it long term you'd be someone i'd be happy to be in a relationship with mm -hmm. something that i have been dealing with is i never pictured i've always pictured myself with a kid oh I've always wanted a kid. And even sure. before like we got into this relationship, I was like, I think I'm going to look for a surrogate if I'm not like Dope, in yeah. a relationship like 34, mm. 35. Like I'd actually really like a child. Mm -hmm. And so in like talking, it's now. So you said you feel like you have a family with your partner. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that maybe me and a partner can be considered a family. Mm. In my mind, the kid is a big, oh, for big sure. dynamic. But one of the reasons I decided to uh embark with this person when we, me and my buddy had a conversation and it was about this about like the kid thing but he's like well do you not know one individual that you think that you'd be like you could just live life with it enjoy life with sans like a kid and i like had to sit down and think about it i was like who is someone mm -hmm. and then i realized i was like oh like well, there's this person i've been like friends with for so long right like we get along so well we, every time we hang out it's such like it's like amazing time amazing vibes okay this is someone i could see myself if i didn't have a kid i could still see, my, see myself being in love with this person, yeah. being happy, having like a good relationship to where I don't feel like I'm missing out on something. Yeah. And now like, like in, in her mind, it's always been like, well, no, two people can be a family. For sure. I'm learning that. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, that's something I, like, I have like appreciated in finding like a partner within a friend. Yeah. Which I yeah. think is very important. And that's like the big takeaway I want from like the conversation is that friendship is something that one can evolve, but two, it's, 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 it's a it's it's a it's a special thing. It's a happy thing. It's a good thing. But you have to want to be friends with the person, not want to use the other sure. person. Mm -hmm. Which is why I think with the sketch and the Sneeko thing is Sneeko gets used by his friends. <sighs> totally. Sketch just gets appreciated by his friends. Totally. And so there's there, there lies the issue of like where these friendships what like what what they mean. <sighs> so many relationships are like um what's that called when you do like um uh give and take mm, but the bad one the exchange the uh, you uh, i'll give you money if you give me a kid like all you can you provide oh, transaction transactional transaction yeah. yeah and i was just like this is not a vibe bro where is the love and then i really yeah. like okay because like prior to meeting my partner just before he had actually met me i was going through my diagnosis for fibromyalgia and i was dying like my body was like it felt like i was dying i had like okay. i had had covid and then all of a sudden my body was like I was just, I thought I was dying. Like I was pretty, I was like, holy fuck. I've never felt this bad in my life. Sorry to hear that. And uh, it's better now. Thank you. And I uh, lost my desire to be a mother. And that's something I've wanted since I was like a kid. Like before I, like when I was nine mm -hmm. years old, I'd be like, I'm going to have a baby. And like, I raised all my siblings yeah. in a healthy way, not in a parentified way, just like in an excited way. I love my nieces and nephews. Like I just love, I love, I even, I was known as the girl who was going to adopt a baby. Even if I didn't have a partner, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to be a mom, bro. Cause like, yeah. this is my destiny. Okay. And then I got sick. And by the time I started courting my partner, I told him, hey, um, even though I've always wanted to be a mom, I need to let you know that I'm starting to lose my desire to be a mother in a really significant way, which has never happened to me. And there's a chance it might not come back, like my desire to be a mother. Do you still want to continue this courting process? Because obviously that's a very big deal for a lot of people. He said it was yeah. fine. 
And we, as a couple, went back and forth for, you know, basically the span of the relationship and recently decided, okay, like we're ready to make the decision, like no biological kids. I just feel very, mm -hmm. um, un I don't feel confident in my body to produce a child <laughs> at the okay. risk of my, at the risk of everything else. So um, we made that decision and it feels like a really good decision for our family. And it was a big deal. Like my, I had to tell my parents and yeah. I had to tell my siblings. And that was like a really big deal. Cause like, you know, yeah. you know, they do their pro life. I mean, you're going to get guilted. Life. You're going to oh. get guilted real quick. You'd yeah. be such a great mother. Why not just try? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then my mom I'm, starts yeah. coming up with great solutions about why I'm tired. And I'm like, remember that like. I look prior to this diagnosis, I trusted my body to have a baby up until 50. I was like, I could do this. Yeah. And then now I'm like, it's not happening. And then more importantly, like my desire went away. Like that desire, you know, that feeling you have. Yeah. It went away and it hasn't come back. And I'm like, it is what it is. Like, I don't even feel sad about it because I already mourned it two years ago. But now that I'm here, which is, you know, I'm just like, oh, yeah. Like, if I wanted to have a baby, I would have a baby. I mean, what would be more devastating, making the decision or like, you know, potentially going through like a miscarriage or something because right. you don't think you're or like if you if like you pass on something that like you feel is, is bad because your body isn't able that's, to. That's like, that's what I'm worried about, yeah. too. Like, trust me, this was like it wasn't just a, you know, you sit down, and you really Quick talk thought. about these things, you know, you, yeah. you think about everything and you weigh all the pros and cons. And like I said, we're always open to adoption. Like, who wouldn't want well, to? I was take about to say, is adoption still on the oh, table? Oh, absolutely, adoption's on the table. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, if we're, I always tell him, like, if we're super wealthy, fifty-year-old, we're adopting mm -hmm. like seven kids. Like, there's I no feel way. Like you would have fun like raising oh, a kid. It'd be so Not, fun. It doesn't necessarily have to be, be like the mother, but like, I feel like you'd have fun. Like, I feel like you'd be good around kids. Yeah. Oh, I like, love them. General. I work nieces and nephews, so on and so forth. Oh, prior to being a YouTuber, I was a professional nanny, and I loved kids. Like, oh, I just, I think amazing. they're the greatest. I just think kids are so fun. And they're just like, the, it's cool to teach someone something like you mm -hmm. pass on tools. I love giving people tools and kids are yeah. the best people to give tools to. So I, I think it would have been great. But ultimately, I didn't realize like I could be so happy in a marriage without kids until I had one. Yeah. And of course, like, yeah. you know, we have a cat. So everybody. Of really course. <laughs> of course, I have my cat sleeping you know, right oh, here. I love my. Yeah, we just like we have yeah. this big, beautiful cat. We, You know, it's just. It's nice to share life with someone ultimately. And I, my nieces and nephews are so important to us. You know, mm -hmm. they've already met him. So that's they great. have a relationship with him and they really like him. And so like, that's really important to us. But it is interesting how much your life can change. Even my audience, we watched me make a podcast from three years ago. We rewatched it. I was like, oh, look how different yeah. I am. I'm not even that person anymore. We change. No. People change. Do. Yeah. This is, that is... No, that's awesome. I'm so happy. Well, I'm not going to lie. So happy we got to have this conversation. Me too. Been, I've wanted to have this conversation for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I am going to get going here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for spending so much time with me. Now. I appreciate it. And please reach Thank out anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I will. Good. Guys. I'm like one of the favorites. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to give it up, but thank you so much for having <laughs> me. I look forward to having more conversations with you in the future. Same, okay. Same. Okay. Reach have out a anytime. Wonderful day. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.